Oh, that, that really, that peaked the mic. Second one for the night. I'm gonna need it. <laughs> to read dialogue isn't that going to be so great come on we're, we're i gotta pop in come on I'm logged in there we go going into this like mostly blind i guess i mean as much as everyone else so time to read i guess <laughs> i know there's probably going to be questionable words in here september 4th you're <laughs> 201 m 2023 bc amid the arid heat of the morning son of Vol oh we're back in volcadera again volcadera bluff i can't help but miss living in the more temperate weather of the midwest summer sleeves are in style this year that jacket aroma blog better be right this suit or is that suede suede thing is killing me this looks like a dating sim, you're right. More or less. It's more visual novel than dating sim. Well, at least it's guaranteed to start getting chillier in a few weeks. Besides, I'm sure to make an impression with this. Am Amber Crombie and Flint is all the rage these days. Alright. I sigh and lean back in the hard plastic seating of the metro. I'm on my way to my first day in a new school. I know half of these words, I, I feel ya. I've been waiting for this game. Ordinarily, I'd just be glued to my phone on the trip, but there's just too much on my mind right now. My folks stitch re my folks sitch requires us to move frequently which gives me a little time to fit in. Much like how a rolling stone gathers no moss, I could never make a friend I'd keep for longer than a year. Just a lot of promises to keep in touch that petered off within months. Admittedly, it's my fault in the end. But that's all going to change starting today. I'm going into senior year now. It's my very last chance to prepare. Luckily for me, the cards are stacked in my favor. I feel around my backpack for my DSLR till my fingers can tell my fingers can absentmindedly fiddle with the mode dial. St. Hammond High School is extremely well known for their art artist's curriculum. In other words, I'll be surrounded by people that share my interests. Even if it's a bit of a ride away. Speaking of rides, I was hoping that my parents could drive me there today. By the time I was up, though, they had already left for work. No no big deal. I like the hustle and bustle of public transportation. I don't! Fuck, trans <laughs> fuck public transportation, dude. I imagine I'm going to have to get used to this anyways. As time passes, my mind wanders to memories of previous schools. drink oh yeah they all sucked what school doesn't suck the train car gradually comes to a stop and the sign indicates that this is where I get off I step off the metro climbing out of the station as I follow a few other students heading towards the school Oddly enough, I'm only seeing Donnie's or students, not another human to be seen anywhere. Must be one of those dino-heavy regions. There's a lot of greenery here as well. You almost forget how close we are to a new major city. The pathway leads to a stone bridge that goes over a small creek. As I walk across, I notice other students meet in pairs and walk with each other. The air begins to fill with the sounds of laughter and stories of their summer break. Ah, there it is. 
The school peeks out over the trees ahead of me, as though inspecting and welcoming me. Wait, as though inspecting and welcoming me inside. I'm just gonna butcher everything I read. <laughs> Saint Hammond High, my new home, away from home for the next year. I stop to take in a deep breath. The air here is crisp, reminding me of an old campground I went back to. I went back in. Wait. I went to back in elementary school. I'm going to butcher everything. Let me turn on my AC a bit more. Some cool air going. Once again, I'm handed an opportunity to make something of myself. 99% reading, 1% gaming, pretty much. So wait, there's humans and dinosaurs. There's got to be a Deltarune, Chris, and Susie reference in this game somewhere. Yeah, keep your eyes out. Keep your eyes out. There's always references in, in uh, Caveman on his games. It's my last shot at this. There's no going back. I take my first step onwards. Here we go again. Ooh, cutscene this time. Let's go. Let's go. Students mill about in the front yard. St. Hammond is known for its heavily prioritized art programs. Over two-thirds of the graduates end up pursuing a career in the arts. And while half of them regret it, from what I've read, there's still plenty that made it, right? It's also the management's claim to fame, with the facade on the front entrance being dominated by a vibrant mural. I got a good feeling about this place. A few students eyeball me as I continue walking in. Some friends whisper to each other. I just knew this jacket would pay off. The front doors are propped wide open and I feel, already feel the cool breeze inviting me in. Inside, it's a familiar yet brand new sight. More dinos. I hadn't mentioned it yet, but this school is unique for its student body. It's, co it's composed almost entirely of dinosaurs, all manner of saurians, saurian herbivores, and otherwise. Scales, feathers, tails, is that a tether? Wings, talons, and webbed hands. Not to, not to even mention the colors. All vibrant enough to, cha to challenge the bright murals on the school outside. Dozens of students march about, reconnecting with past friends and meeting new ones. Is that Dexter right there? <laughs> I just noticed. Actually, isn't there like a... I forget if there's... I forget the way to, like, get rid of the text on the back. Some anxiously glance at their schedules, checking every door as though, as though they were numbered at random. I probably shouldn't be standing here staring. Whoa, is that a human? Uh-oh. I'm soon surrounded and overrun by a crowd of neon-colored teenagers. Clearly, my jacket is working like a charm. Wow, he's like a life-size mannequin. Hey, new kid. I'm instantly swarmed by the crowd. Is, is this what it's like to be popular? I really wasn't expecting it to happen this quickly. A few students are taking pictures with their phones. I even see some with sketchbook and pens in hand rapidly scribbling on pages. Wow, a human! Are you like a foreign exchange student? In the chaos, I feel few people touch my hands. Whoa, human skin feels weird. Jeez, a bit uncalled for. But I guess I don't want to be a party pooper. A few more people shout at me to get my attention. Hey, could you look over here for a side profile? Oh man, this will be good reference material. Wait, wait, I need to get a better look at his skin texture. I once again find myself frozen, only mutteringly, muttering quietly as I hastily try to follow their instructions. Why are they moving like the cardboard cutouts in Home Alone? It's an indie company, cut them some slack! 
Uh oh. Oh no, you can see you can see my chats. No. Eventually the Saurians take all their photos and talk themselves talk themselves out before dispersing back to their own friend groups. By the time I recover from the shock of the situation, the last one breaks off and I find myself seemingly all alone again. Oh. That was my chance to socialize. <laughs> yeah, I know the feeling. I blew it. Um, you're a human, right? A Triceratops girl leans forward, scanning me up and down. I gotta turn this down a little bit on my end. I can't hear myself talk. This is it. Time to seal the deal and get a new friend. Uh, yeah. Close enough. Hey, can I, like, get a selfie with you? It'd be great for one of my classes. Yeah, definitely. She puts an arm around my back for a shoulder hug while she poses dramatically. Are we a bit too friendly? Big smile now. She takes the picture and checks it enthusiastically. So, uh, I'm in Inco. Huh? Oh, cool. Yeah, yeah. Anyways, I gotta go. Oh. What's the photo for, by the way? She pauses aloofly, chewing some gum. My fashion design class. That jacket is ballin'. Ah. Uh, thanks for the pick, hon. <laughs> I know the feeling. Well, I feel my shoulders sag as I take in the now sparse hallway around me. That must have been my 15 minutes of fame. I don't think it even lasted 15 minutes. There's no way I've already blown it. I try to shake away the negative thoughts. Focus on the positive. For a brief moment, I was the talk of the school. Yeah. A familiar song draws my attention. I know what that is. At the end of the hall, there's someone kneeling. And with one of the la latest camera models, if I'm not mistaken. Hey! The guy flinches. I flinch too. I hadn't meant to shout at him. A few students around me don't bat an eye at it though. Sorry about the yell. No, it's fine. I managed to get the shot I wanted. The, the bespectacled boy, I think he's a parasaur, double checks the camera's display and smiles. Yep, perfect. This will be a fine print for the yearbook. And I see. His grin seems to widen at my interest. Of course, here. He turns the display towards me, showing a shot of the hallway. And me as the focal point. <laughs> Pretty good, right? I look a little closer and notice that. I think it's a little out of focus. And dark. What do you have at your f stop set at? F stop said I. I don't know these terms. Ash. He stops and glances up at me, pleasantly surprised to get a real answer. Yeah, I'm a bit of a photographer myself. I'm taking it as an elective too. With Mr. Ladakin? Thinking back to my memorized class schedule, the name does sound familiar. Yep. Oh snap! Cool. We'll be classmates. Mr. Ladakin's busy, so he just teaches it for one period. He offers his hand out for a handshake. I'm Ben. Inko. Friend achieved. Let's go. I'm actually new here. Kind of figured, being the only human student this year and all. St. Hammond isn't one of the more popular schools, but the staff puts a lot of effort into the arts programs. Even the campus itself is designed like a living art piece, so if you ever need help... From the pause, I'm guessing he's offering some help. I wouldn't say no to a tour. A tour, you say? Well, I'm only going back to the principal's office, but I can point out some neat stuff along the way. He raises an eyebrow to himself in contemplation. Might be a good idea to meet the principal, too. He waits for me to follow him. 
Let's go. Water. You gotta get some water in. Can't be all alcohol. It turns out he wasn't just an avid photographer like me, but also the school, the school council president. And one of his priorities was taking photos for St. Hammond's yearbook for the first day page. Every few minutes, we'd pause so Ben could take a couple of shots, mainly of the students talking with each other. And while I would watch, I had considered helping him in some way. I mean, that camera looks amazing, and then there's all his extra lenses in the bag. I feel absolute. I feel absolute elation to finally know there's someone that's into photography and i really want to broach it but bren fills the air between us talking more about the school which is why we still go by the feather tails even though i think it's a tad distasteful <laughs> dang you're pretty good at this do you give those tours to all the new students <laughs> not really although it's something i've always thought about a lot i turn it down a bit more Oh, hold that thought. Hey, Lunara! Ben goes to greet a student putting up some intricate wall banners. Oh, hey, Ben. You have a good su you have a good summer vacation? I did. Great work on the decorations. They look even better than last year's. Oh, thank you. What's all this for? She steps aside so I can view the banners she just finished with. The Cultural Arts Club. We meet every Thursday after school to look at antique artwork. She initially looks past me to talk with Ben, but she, gra she gasps when she realizes, Hey, you're a human, right? Oh, that's a silly question. You should totally join. I just love human culture. There's this amazing set of ancient masks at my place from ancient Europe. I just adore them. Wow, that's impressive. Think you'd make a good curator? Oh wait, think you'd make a good curator. There's no question mark on that one. <laughs> you know what? I probably would. After that club display during spring week last year, I gotta agree. We took weeks studying that tribe and weeks more practicing those dances. We also studied we also study and paint with those styles, like we're learning the techniques of the old masters. Oh, Ugh. All right. Hopefully soon we can even get into sculpting like those old Venus statues. We plan on getting one to look at sometime this year. What do you think? It'd be great if you could come. Hey, that'd be neat. What do you say, Inko? Hmm. Maybe. I do love culture. Oh, that's great. Oh, oh, listen. We have this old chieftain's dress we've had for ages. We just have to see what it looks like on the real thing. Uh, I'll think about it. No way. I'd soon, <laughs> I'd sooner endure a second impact event than wear something like that. <laughs> oh, hey. Nice to catch up, Lunara. We got places to be. Take care. Bye. She waves us off, and Ben continues leading me to the principal's office. Oh, there's so much reading in this. I was not prepared. Hey, Ben. Oh, hey, Michael. Listen, can't talk now, but I'd love to catch up later, yeah? I'm floored. This, guy's just seem this guy seems to know just about everyone in school as much as they know him. Talk about being on top of things. He points out a few more minor landmarks in the school and stops to greet a number of, student number of students happy to see him after the summer break. I know it's a reading game. I know. I'm going to be dead by the end of this, and it's just the demo. <laughs> Man, sorry for having to stop so much. No way. I think it's cool you know everyone. If only it could be cool without making us late. He points out a few more minor landmarks in the school, eventually leading me to its biggest draw. I already knew St. Hammond was known for art, but wow. Just outside the administrative offices, the hallway is filled with wonderful pieces of work. What work? I don't see nothing. Paintings line the wall- lockers line the walls, let's be honest. With name placards beneath detailing who the artists were. All alumni from the school. And this is the gala. 
All of these pieces have been featured in all kinds of articles and presentations. Whoa! I know, right? One moment. Ben turns to the nearest door and gives it a polite knock. Who is it? It's me, Principal Scaler. Oh, wait, it's me, Principal Scaler. Well, we're not doing Principal Spears this time. I see how it is. An OV Raptor, no older than her mid-30s, exits the room, holding a steaming mug and sporting a tired smile. <laughs> Look at those eye bags, dude. Up for ages. Good morning, Benjamin. Good morning. Inko, this is our esteemed principal. Good morning, ma'am. Her eyes shoot wide mid-sip of her coffee. <laughs> Looking like she just saw a ghost. <laughs> oh, I hadn't noticed. You would be Mr. Ganito, right? <laughs> uh, yeah? But my name... How wonderful! Gone is the exhaustion on her face, instead replaced by a very wide smile. I'm so happy that you've chosen our school for your last year, Mr. Nidu. Ben, be sure to give him a thorough St. Harmon welcome, okay? Er, uh, I already was. If you ever need my assistance, my office is always open, Mr. Nido. Not to mention, the student council is also available for help. Isn't that right, Ben? Yes, Principal Scaler. Thank you. Uh, thank you, Principal Scaler. Oh, and Ben, a moment, please. But... A parasaur is dragged into the office, leaving me alone at the school gala. Whatever they're saying, I can't overhear the ambient noise. Wait, whatever they're saying, I can't hear over the ambient noise of the student body. Either way, it's probably not something I'm meant to hear. I move a few feet away, out of earshot of discussion inside. On the wall beside me is a framed panoramic landscape of the city, painted by hand. Water break. Wow, I could practically use this thing as a map with how detailed it is. No wonder it's hanging so predominantly by the principal's office. The gentle brush strokes, the vibrant colors, the evening sun bouncing off of the windows, and the majestic scarlet sky enveloping the horizon. All of which combine together to give a dreamscape feeling like it's an idolized ver idealized version of the city. It's beautiful. I've never been a big admirer of paintings, but I can't deny that this is a masterpiece. Only a teacher could have been able to express the scenic beauty of the city with this level of skill and passion. I withdraw my Kavan Stone 60 from my... Wait. Withdraw my oh, it's it's a cannon. It's instead of in, instead of cannon, it's cavern. I got I gotta realize there's sorry I'm like very fizzy. There's a lot of uh, dinosaur puns in here. Dinosaur and caveman puns. I withdraw my cavern stone sixty from my bag, and with the compact lens I keep, I barely fit the entirety of the painting in frame for the shot. Checking the copy on my display, I realized I left out the title of the artist of the piece. Tag says, Dreamscape, Artist, O. Halford, 9th grade. First place, 202M, two, 2018. A freshman did this, jeez. Now that I look at the rest of the paintings, this is insane. It's all so much better than what I've made. Almost all the pieces are beautifully drawn. Acrylic, charcoal, pastel, and yet not even one photo. Hey Inko, I'm back. I'm a senior, how on earth am I meant to even start measuring up here? Inko? What's that sound? Ben nudges me back with the back of his hand as he... As the commotion gets closer... Hey, watch it, jackass! Slow your roll, Letterface! 
My leg! I watch as the uh, perpetrator, aggressor, aggregator, finally. <laughs> oh no, here we go, the aggregator. <laughs> finally rounds the corner and comes barreling down the hallway. I watch as the green dinosaur in a wheelchair speeds towards Ben and I. Here we go. Here we go. My instincts kick in and I stumble inside to avoid the oncoming collision. For just a split second, I get a good look at my assailant. Man, the animations are so nice. Green scales, messy hair, and a faded purple hoodie. She propels herself forward with dexterous hands, spinning the large wheels on her. I only now notice that she's in a wheelchair. I didn't even know you could go that fast in one of those. She glances my way, and her pupils lock onto mine. Her gray and gold eyes are marred by bags like she hasn't slept in days. The girl's entire presence is ghost-like. And that expression, it's like she's looking straight through me. Actually, give me a moment here. I'm going to show out the link real quick. I should have done this earlier. But I'm dumb. <laughs> Alright. Back to the game. I'm sure she barely registers my existence, but I don't think I'll ever forget that face. Just as fast as she came, however. She's gone. They didn't they couldn't even animate that. Okay. Budget cuts. As she leaves, I feel a weight is lifted from my shoulders. At least until I trip directly into a glass case behind me. Oof. Hey, watch it. Whoops. The parasaur's hands roll over the display carefully, his eyes filled with worry. You looking for something? Cracks. Usually when another student falls onto them, there's some kind of crack or scratch. Guess it's just a dino thing. Wait, guess it's just a dino thing. You humans are lucky you don't have to sweat over this kind of stuff. That happen often? Often enough to drain school funds and repairs. That can't be good. Well, not to brag, but I make do. A vibrate, a vibrato chime. I know I probably butchered that. I don't care. Echoes through the now empty hall. I freeze. Tardy on the first day. Ha! Whoops. Sorry to run on you like that. You should get going to your first class. Won't I need a tardy slip or something? Nah, it's the first day. Teachers are lenient. I'm fine either way, since, you know, one of the benefits of being class prez. What's your first period? Physical education. Ben sucks the air in through his teeth in a prolonged wince. Uh-oh. You'll be fine. Gymnasium's down that away. Don't uh, keep him waiting too long. I need to get going too. Keep who waiting? I gotta go too. Bye. Whoa, he walks fast when he's somewhere to be. That reaction doesn't exactly instill confidence in me. I follow Ben's direction towards the school gymnasium. After all the earlier commotion, it's the first quiet moment to myself. Might as well take it to finally sort my thoughts. Let's see, what do I think of this place so far? It's certainly livelier than any of the other schools I've been to. Ever since I stepped foot in here, everything's been so lively and everyone seems so exuberant. It makes me feel a little out of my depth since I'm so used to the opposite. Here, people like that girl earlier are eager to share their hobbies almost without being prompted. 
Everywhere else I've been, people just keep to themselves. Like they're only there because they have to be. It hits me. The school's art program attracts people. The students here don't have to be here. They're choosing to be here, and that's why it's so active. Well, alright. What can I do with this information? It means I could probably be friends with anyone I want, right? Weird to say, with everyone here sort of working with each other, there's bound to be an insane level of com <laughs> camaraderie, too. God, I'm gonna butcher everything. Maybe I won't have to try. I'm almost at the gymnasium now, though, so I'll hold this. I'll hold this thought for later. Ah, gym class, where the boys are separated from the men, and when people with Herculean physiques are able to show off their sculpted bodies. I begin to remember how much I dreaded going to PE. The innumerable bad experiences from past schools pale in comparison to the many skidded knees and broken glasses. Hopefully the school's PE is a lot less grueling. It wasn't. As I stand before the wooden double doors leading into the gym, I'm struck with how empty the area looks. That's followed by me catching the sound of physical activity coming from within the gym itself. Shoot, I really am late. Ben's earlier warning echoes in my head like a foreboding spirit. I peer through the small windows on the doors and see the students standing shoulder to shoulder. Towering over them is a primate who I can only guess is our gym teacher with his arms crossed and scowl on his face. Well, I guess this is Principal Spears, huh? I hope I can get away with being tardy. As I walk into the... Yeah. <laughs> My first thought is how lucky I am to be alive. I don't even know what was thrown at me, but it might as well have been a cannonball. I spot the gym teacher, and even though his bat his baseball cap and even through his baseball cap, I could feel his stare of rage pierce my soul. Such intensity and that ideal throwing form that it is only missed by mere centimeters. That was a warning shot. Oh, it literally is an ape. <laughs> know this and know this well, son. I have a policy. Each of my platoons get one free miss from me a year. And you just spent it. I shift my eyes to the students lined up next to them. And they're so stiff with fear, I can't tell what they're feeling. You got three seconds to lay it on the front of your squadron. Why in the great name of KV Docket are you late? Well, I... He didn't even move. Hint taken. I shut my mouth. The Simeon Scholar starts marching back and forth like a drill sergeant. Listen up, because I'm only going to say this once. In this class, we operate on tough love. We learn from our past mistakes, so you better pray to Raptor Jesus that you don't forget them. Because if you do... With three monstrous steps, the couch closet... Wait. With three monstrous steps, the couch closed the distance of ten yards to tower over me. I will be very upset. It reflects poorly on all of us, and that's not something I will accept. So I'd love to see you maggots succeed, but if you don't, I'll make it unforgivable. Or forgettable. Yeah. <laughs> Am I understood? I nod my head in fear. Fan freaking tastic! Now then, join the rest of your ranks and stiffen up. God, that's gonna kill my voice. <laughs> Once I confirm my platter is intact, I shuffle over to where my colleagues stand. I feel them staring at me with anger, like I'm responsible for the coach's teaching style. What an appalling first impression to make. I should just quit and start over somewhere else while I still can. The teacher takes a second to glance over us, reminding himself of where he was before I interrupted. I gotta take a drink of- ATTENTION MAGGOTS! I gotta take a drink after that. This is gonna kill me, speaking in all caps. You will- 
You will all drop and give me 20 of the finest push-ups. Those guts better be an ant's fart off of pristine gym floor or else. With a violently loud blow of his whistle, the coach also takes his position to show the proper technique. I hide my winces as my knees impact roughly on the ground. The real pain starts as I try to keep pace with everyone around me. Boy, do I know that feeling. My biceps and forearms threaten to splinter from the weight of my body and the speed of my jerky movements. I never realized how badly out of shape I was. <laughs> On your feet, bipedal slugs! <laughs> this guy, he ain't human. Some kind of primate, maybe? A close relative? I can feel my muscles hollering in pure agony as I force myself up from the gymnasium floor. By the time I'm back on my feet, my breathing is heavy and coming out in whistles. Now then, since it's only the first day of school, how about we have ourselves a good old game of dodgeball? Did, did he say dodgeball? Oh yeah, dodgeball time! I shoot a glance over towards the enthusiastic dino next to me, who is absolutely elated by the prospect of the upcoming game. I gotta turn the stone. We only finished the warm up, and my muscles are already screaming. My knees shake, my lungs burn, and I'm so drenched in sweat that I'm sure I might need a shower after this. I really don't want to play dodgeball. Aren't we lucky? First day of school, and we get to play a game! I. I don't... I don't do dodgeball. Why not? I... Uh, I'm not exactly... Alright, maggots! Pick a side and keep numbers even! This is a suicide match! And free-for-all, too! Damien! Why don't you socialize by picking your teammates? Shades, you're on the blue team! Didn't he say we could pick teams? All right, I'm going with the human dude. Before I can even say a word, the, the Dilophosaurus wraps an arm around my neck and brings me to his side of the field. Oh, oh wait. Oh, and one last thing. His leer and tone freezes me to the spot. What's the first rule? We only got one. Have fun. Gang up on the weakest one. Wait, what? In a matter of seconds, the gymnasium becomes a full-blown battleground. I do my <laughs> I do my best to dodge the oncoming flurry of red rubber spears coming my way like bullets. I dive to the ground, avoiding oncoming projectiles as they soar overhead and pelt my comrades. I hear the blows, the guttural groans of those who've already succumbed to the onslaught of the inflated orbs. Combat crawling away from the fierce front. I entrench myself along the edge of the field in the hopes of being ignored. I cast my gaze at the rest of my allies, and oh god, it's a full rout. So many by- So how's the first day of school treating you, bro? I look up to see the Finn Dino, the same pink Dilophosaurus who has dragged me to his side of the court, staring down at me and smiling. What do you think? Uh, what do you think? I watch as he casually dodges incoming balls before throwing his own. Name's Damien, by the way. Inko, nice to meet you. You two, Chrome Dome and Frills. Who said that you had time to talk? Does my gymnasium look like a debate stage? I mean, maybe if we got some of those stands from the auditorium, maybe. I know a guy's uncle that could make a really classy podium. I look at Damien with absolute bewilderment. What is this guy thinking? The coach looks like he's about to explode. Do not play smarts with me, son. Keep your traps shut and your eyes focused on the enemy. <coughs> I'm gonna kill my voice, dude. Oh, Damien just smiles and gives the coach a thumbs up, as if we aren't in the middle of an active war zone. You got it, Mr. Solly. That's Coach Sully to you! And what's the holdup, Shades? You're just making yourself an easy target on the floor! Get up and play to win! Alright. 
Guess it's my time to do something worth. But I'm not exactly good at dodgeball. Oh, maybe I could do the whole blocking thing for everyone. That should hopefully make it so that everyone isn't peeved at me for wasting the warning shots. But here's where things change. I could totally turn it around. <laughs> I could totally turn this around. All is equal in the court. A ball aimlessly rolls to the floor in front of me, calling out to be my ammunition. I somehow weave through two shots at me and pick up the ball. Oh yeah, I'm feeling it now. I'm on fire. There's no way I'm losing now. I grab onto the ball and start blocking any shots that so much as cross our side of the field. Yeah, I'm doing great. Block one, block two, block three. Now I'm really feeling it. I bet everyone's looking at me now. Any thought of playing the game suddenly left my mind like it was never there. Who cares? Doing this is more than enough. I can be the star. Hey, new guy! A new voice catches my attention. A crimson parasaurus. Think fast! What? Ooh. Ouch. Drink time. Oh. All right. The floor is cold. Maybe I shouldn't have come here at all. A pair of extremely dirty sneakers enter my field of view. You're gonna get up, Shades? No, I give up. Ah. <laughs> oh man, that hurts. How long was I out? I'm laying down on something soft. Where am I? My vision clears and I sit up from the plastic bed. It sure is bright in here. Oh shit! I broke my sunglasses! Lucky I brought my reserve pair. <laughs> they just fall down. <laughs> Much better. I stand from the rubber mattress. Taking in the tiny room, finally. All alone? Not even a school nurse or anything? Oh, there she is. Looks like she's attending to another student who has his snout stuck in a cone. Huh. Looking at the clock on the wall, it's already noon. I would explain the pounding headache. Finally awake, Shades! I sit ramrod straight, the fear of God stricken into me once more. Calm yourself. <laughs> Calm yourself, cadet. You ate dirt pretty hard back there. Oh, man. Yeah. Wait. You did that? I did. Pelted you right in the back. You know why? Because I messed up? Be more specific, kid. Because I couldn't be a good teammate if I got hit in the face. Er, wrong. It was after that. I don't... Nothing happened after that. No, you gave up. But I was doing well. You think so? I was blocking the balls and all. You weren't blocking anything. You were showing off. You found a single thing you could do and started dancing around like a clown. You focused on the easy thing and gave up the real thing. Oh wow, is this is going to be foreshadowing. You were so focused that you forgot to look around for a moment. This, this is going to this is going to be the the whole meaning of the game right here. And here you are. I know a defeated man when I see one. And there's no way in hell I'm letting a student of mine give up so easily. It's the first period of the day, and you're already giving up. Either way, that's a pretty bad lump you ended up with. You gotta watch around some students, if you know what I mean. I blink a few times and recall the chick that yelled at me to catch, followed by pounding me in the face. That one, she's, uh... He chuckles to himself a bit. 
She's something, all right. Yeah, looked like the devil herself. Anyways, take the rest of the day off, kid. What? I'm telling you to go home. The principal gave the okay. I feel my head again. Another stab of pain. Am I really not good to go back to class? Wasn't I getting lectured about this just a few moments ago? Well, I don't want to give up so easily. No, you should go home for you, to your folks. He scratches the back of his head, slightly embarrassed. Alright, uh, about that. We tried calling them earlier. Couldn't reach them. I gave a sad half smile. Eh, sounds about right. I can make it home fine on my own. He nods. When you get back, don't give up so easily. He holds the door to the nurse's office open. I nod and exit the office, Coach Solly closing and locking the door. Right, drink. Oh, and here's for tomorrow. A brown paper bag is shoved in my arms along with my backpack. Peeking in, I see some blue and gold wrapped in, pa uh, wrapped in plastic. If you hadn't been late, you could have changed into those. I, uh, thank you, sir. Next time, Shades, think faster, got it? Yes, sir. His smile is positively unnerving. <laughs> now scram, cadet. My voice is going to be turned into mincemeat. <laughs> Well, this is officially the worst first day I've ever had. As my feet drag along the linoleum, <laughs> the linoleum floor, I can't help but painfully think of all the failures I've had in the past few hours. No thanks to a very prominent bump on the back of my head. Ow. I'm worse than everyone here, both on a creative and physical level. I know I really shouldn't be bothered by it, but I hate seeing just how far behind I am compared to everyone else. And I thought I'd... And I thought I'd wait. And I thought I'd knew friends with. What sentence? What is that? And I thought I'd knew friends with. Whatever. <laughs> what was I thinking? I stop and shake my head a bit. What the heck am I doing sulking like this? It's a bad first day, but it's just the first day. There's still all the rest. I still met Bet. I still met Ben and Damien. They're pretty cool. I'm not going to let my optimism be ruined just because of a bad dodgeball match. Just do wait, St. Harmon. Today was a test run. Tomorrow's the real deal. God. Reading! <laughs> my voice is going to crap. Morning comes. What a nice room. I've always had a decent internal clock. But it's a new record for me to get accustomed to the new sleeping schedule in just one day. Especially with this fully grown lump on my scalp. I move, it, I move an arm from my sheets and feel my head. Yeah, that's bruised real good. Could be worse though. Alright, time to get up. I slump out of bed. I slump out of bed with and yawn, stretching my arms and cracking my spine a bit. My new room's pretty nice. Quite spacious, even with all the still sealed boxes. I brush my hand over one of them, and one with my other and one with my other clothes. I'll get around to open them at some point. Right now, though, it's time for breakfast. I'm pretty sure everyone left by now. That's okay. Ah, take another drink break. I'm playing this game for me. Anyways, I shuffled downstairs to the heart of the house. The morning sunbeams shining through the windows, drawing my eyes to look out the new neighborhoods. The driveway is empty. Looks like my parents are already gone for the day. No surprise there, really. It's all they ever focus on. A shiver runs up my spine as my feet step on the icy tiles of the kitchen. 
My eyes are drawn to some taped up boxes that are still scattered about on the counters. There's a familiar sticky note on the fridge and I don't even have and I don't even have to read it to know what it says. At this point, mom's just wasting paper. The least she could do is reuse the same note and make small addendums to it. I snag a plate from the nearest drawer and open up the freezer. No fresh produce to be seen, but there's still mostly full box of breakfast burritos. Yeah, I've been trying to appreciate ethnic cultures more. Plate loaded with a couple of the minuscule flowered wrap meals. I set I set the microwave and wait for the burritos to hopefully not explode or burn inside. While I wait though, I check my phone. I scan over my news feeds. I scan over my newsfeed and check out some of the people I'm subscribed to, hoping there's something to watch during my meal. <sighs> Unfortunately, well, how do I go back? Oh no. Oh no. <laughs> I skipped. How do I how do I go back? What are the controls? <laughs> history there we go, history. Unfortunately, nobody posts videos or streams this early in the morning. Guess I'll just watch a suggested video then. I prop, I prop my phone up and click on something random. At the ding of the microwave, I retrieve my breakfast, carrying it carefully so I don't burn my hands on the bottom of the plate. I give the first burrito a test bite and... Ugh, the inside's still cool. I don't want to stick it back in though, the tortilla would just become a brick then. I shrug it off and continue chewing and watch my phone. <laughs> Top of the morning, folks! By the time the video ends, I've finished the last of the half thawed burritos. Pocketing my phone, I slip the plate into the sink and head out for the day. This time, I'm at least getting through the day. Today, Survival. Tomorrow, thrival. I'll work on it. We're back. We're the same people again. On the metro again, I take a little more time to check out my surroundings. The sun shines through the windows across from my normal seat. There's this one chick that... There's this one chick that was there yesterday, probably on her way to work. It's probably a set routine for her at this point. She always does a bit of makeup first and then checks her phone for the rest of the way. When the sun shines through the window, it highlights her hair in a really neat way. Like a movie poster, almost. I take a picture, but it might be a little too awkward for me. Also, everything's disappeared. Why is it so dark? Ahem. How's St. Armin treating you so far, Mr. Nido? A voice so deep I feel it reverber- <laughs> It reverberates in my bones call- right. A voice so deep I feel it reverberate in my bones calls from above. There we go. Oh god. <laughs> I'm taken aback by his authoritative stature. His head is nearly grazing the top of the passenger car. How did he even get in here? Oh, I, uh, it's been great so far, M Mr. Ferris. He offers out his hand for a handshake. Though his palm alone smothers my entire hand. How do you know my name? You're clearly going to school. The nearest one in St. Harmon, and I'm already aware of the new human student. If you don't mind me, if you don't mind my profiling. Whoa, you got all that just from looking at me? I'm partially joking. Your full name is printed on your backpack. <laughs> you know that's dangerous, right? Oops. Yeah, that's me, all right. <laughs> but please. I know it's only been a few days since the year started, but I'd like to hear your opinion so far. Is this a questionnaire or something? Not exactly, but it is of some importance of an assignment of mine. What does that mean? Oh, what am I being secretive for? I'm here to audit your school, see the teachers, know the students, 
Make sure it's a proper place of learning. I wish it were something worth being secretive about. More often than not, it's just paperwork and office politics. Oh, alright then. My thoughts on the school so far. I consider telling him about a teacher's <laughs> I consider telling him about a teacher nailing me with a dodgeball to make a point. Nah, I'm over it. Well, the class that I have <laughs> the classes I have are great, and the teachers I have are a dynamic bunch. Wow, what a bunch of bullshit! <laughs> Dude didn't even go to school much just one class, but okay. He thumbs the inside of his coat pocket for his pen, but decides he doesn't need it yet. I see. Any favorites? Oh boy, time to bullshit harder. I mean, I don't like I don't like to have favorites. But all the staff seem pretty lively. Ferris lets out a heavy, rumbling chuckle. That's certainly good to hear. And what about your fellow students? Made any friends? It's been a bit of a struggle, but it's always been that way for me since my folks move around a lot. I think I'm doing pretty good this time around, though. Why do you think that is? I think it's the jacket. The jacket? I give my lapel a quick tug for extra style points. <laughs> the Coastline Cotton Nylon Bomber number 32. Part of the latest catalog by a and F. I see. Does he need <laughs> does he need to lean so close to inspect it? If the carriage rocks in any way, he'd probably turn me into a piece of modern art against the window. And that's really what the youth are into these days? Hey, the results speak for themselves. Hmm. Harvey's thinking about it. It's got nothing to do with his work. I think I have a pretty good idea. Mr. Ferris? Do you got no swag? Huh? Um, well, I... It probably answers it. I admit to be a... I admit to being a little gray. I'm aware I'm not exactly with it anymore. Well, even the older generations can dress to impress. You just have to see what people today like to wear. I'm certainly willing to listen to the youth of today, yes. It is somewhat important to my job to know how the student body thinks. And my niece often suggests dressing more relaxed, whatever that means. Does she ever see you in casual clothes? I'm wearing them now. I could save him. <laughs> oh boy. Drink. Oh. The rest of the trip was quick, but we continue with small talk about trends. When we arrive at my stop, he attempts to give me his business card. For some for someone whose mere presence could stop a fight, he seems like a genuinely nice fellow. I look forward to talking to him again. Oh god, those burritos were a mistake! I know that feeling all too well. My stomach is roiling after the warm-ups. Alright maggots, today we'll be working on your cardiovascular system! By that, I mean a good old-fashioned mile run. I want everyone out on the track field yesterday! I notice Damien's mouth opens as soon as Coach Solly yells the words. And no, Damien, that doesn't mean I want you to time travel. Unless, of course, you mean running so fast that you hit 88 miles an hour. And just as quickly, Damien shuts his mouth again and shoots Solly a thumbs up. And this is totally Reed. This is Reed. Solly's only reply is to let out a snort. Double time it now, cupcakes! There's no hesitation for me this time. I follow the rest of the class and do the run Solly wanted. As expected, I rapidly fall behind the pack. <laughs> I know that feeling. Hey, Inko, nice of you to drop by. How are you doing? Damien, what are you doing back here? 
Keeping my new buddy company, of course. What are you doing? Tr trying not to vomit? You're doing great then. Thanks, I guess. Shouldn't you be at the very front of the pack, though? Next to Mia? Nah, man, not her. Mia? You know, the one who knocked you out yesterday? A brief flashback reminds me of the Red Parasaurus. Uh, her. By the by, glad to see you're doing way better today. You're even up and running. Yeah, glad I didn't wind up with permanent brain damage. Hey, question. Was what happened yesterday normal here at St. Harmon? Well, Mia's a wild one, that's for sure. That's not to mess with her, unless you're into those kind of chicks, in which case, be my guest. As for Solly, yeah, he's always like that. You'll get used to it, though. He ain't that bad a guy once he warms up to you. If you say so. Hey, don't worry, man. You're going to fit right in no time flat. In fact, you should sit with us at lunch. That way we can give you the proper St. Hyman welcome and stuff. Lunch? We? I, I mean... Inko! Damien! Don't fall behind! Solly's voice snaps me from my mini stupor and makes me realize just how far behind Damien and I had fallen behind the rest of the class. Whoops, better catch up with the others before Solly brings out the punitive measure. Uh, excuse me, the what? You don't want to find out, brother, you trust me. What? Come on, dude, let's chat. Before I can say another word, Damien gets behind me and starts pushing me forward, forcing my legs to move faster than ever I sh than ever should have. I have to struggle not to trip over myself, but somehow I manage to keep up the pace that Damien was forcing my whole body to maintain. Five minutes and three more laps later, I fall flat on my ass, heart beating so fast and lungs burning so fiercely that every breath feels like a sandpaper scraping against my throat. I kind of feel like that. <laughs> Regardless of that, though, I finish the jog. The first small steps towards conquering my physical weakness. Good job, maggots. Keep this up and you'll be soldiers yet. Sally turns to me and with a slight grin shoots me a thumbs up. Okay, that's all for today. Hit the lockers, cupcakes. Oh, I need a drink. That voice is going to kill me. Damien. Damien helps back up, and I join the rest of the male students back at the locker rooms. We talk a bit more about interest and in other school matters on the way. Damien filling me a bit on the St. Hammond's history during the three years he's been in attendance. By a bit of luck, our lockers aren't that far apart from one another, but our conversation isn't a real possibility considering all the other ones going on in the relatively cramped locker rooms. There really isn't that much more time to chat before the bell rings for our next class switch. Holy crap, we've been an hour in already. I wait goodbye to Damien and start looking for my next class. Don't forget, lunch with the buds! I nod in reply as I turn, ar turn around and head down the halls to turn towards my next class. Making my way down the hall, I notice the I take notice of the surroundings. Everything about the school seemed pretty normal, but there are some key modifications made to better suit the majority of the student body. Mainly water fountains that settle a good 10 or more feet above me. Overall, nothing crazy special. This next class, I'm sort of wholesome Juan. Hey, welcome in. How are you doing? This next class, I'm sort of looking forward to. AP, art design, I've actually been looking forward to this. Class looks like it's a studio classroom on the second floor. Part of the school here is built to be both inside and outside, with open ceilings and walls here and there. Since it's also THE art wing, the display pictures are coated in hydrophobic layers and framed. Although since it's the start of the year, 
The halls are freshly cleared, waiting to be filled in as the semester passes. Of course, there's no shortage of drains. This hall in particular is displayed prominently in the school's advertising material, and for good reason. Smiley face. I see that. The carefully and expertly built dynamic between the surrounding nature, the school, and even the building materials themselves is nothing less but mystical. I can already feel the creative juices flowing. Soon enough, I'm standing just outside the door to my next class. Much like the school wall outside, it's decorated in various colors and patterns, each corner painted and tagged by different, different students. I barely step foot inside before the bell rings. Since I was the last one in, all but one of the other seats were taken. It's pretty close to the front. While many of the students look well prepared, there's some clearly ready to fall asleep within the next few minutes. And there's the teacher. He's standing up by the board, waiting for me to finish looking around and take a seat. Since he isn't urging me to look for a seat, he must be used to new students taking it all in. That must be the art teacher. Somehow, he looks young and old at the same time. Well, don't want to hold up class for too long. Try not to take the teacher's hospitality for granted. I take seats. I take the seat closest to me in front in the front row. Man, I'm butchering all of this today. I think it's time for another drink. Maybe if I read a little bit slower. Even with me sitting down, the art teacher still continues to idle instead of staring at the seated students with a hazy stare. Nobody else seems to be paying attention to him, save for the few people here and there. A few students are whispering something behind me. Where was he? Yesterday? Hey, I'm not complaining about less work. Yeah, but on the first day? Ah, so in a way, it's the teacher's first day as well. So I didn't miss anything in class. That's pretty cool, actually. The teacher slams the front of his desk with both fists, and the sound echoing through the room. It's the signal for all auxiliary conversation to cease, and the class obeys. Despite the sudden furniture abuse, the teacher doesn't look agitated. Rather, he's got a massive grin on his face. A phrase winning smile comes to mind. Right then! The pale pterodactyl holds what looks to be a metallic tray on a stick. Good morning, class! Thank you, Raptor Jesus, for forcing me to wear prescription shades. My classmates are all wincing in pain and wiping out their eyes. And welcome to our AP art design! He holds up the stick haphazardly. This is a flash pan! Saw it at an antique store yesterday. Thought it'd be a good introduction. It's not important. Worthless, actually. The class winces as the stick is chucked into the garbage bin and... Oh. Fast fingers, I guess. <laughs> Excuse my absence yesterday. I had matters to take care of elsewhere. My name is Mr. I... Mr. Idekin. Idekin. I'm just gonna say Idekin. Within the blink of the eye, the teacher has replaced the sun on a stick with a fancy marker and managed to scrawl his name across the board in its finest shoal of calligraphy. And I shall be your guide as we explore the expanse of the creative world. Let's not dilly-dally then, shall we? For a teacher, he's very... animated. This first week, we'll be going in-depth on the history of the fundamentals of art. Perhaps a little trial by fire as well, to get your creative juices flowing. There's murmurs from my classmates, though I pay them no mind. In fact, the, the prospect of doing some creative work, something I could possibly show off. For a brief moment, I picture my own name on a placard in the hallway outside the principal's office. For now though, I'd like for you all to open up your books to page three. Right, my book. What book? Wait. 
looking around, I see that everyone else has novel-sized hardcover books open. Oh. I must have gotten them yesterday. Now then, class, we'll be starting with... Hesitantly, I raise my hand. Mr. Leck... <laughs> Already, I forget it. Mr. Le... <laughs> I... Mr. Eidekin, sir. I, uh... I don't have a book yet. You don't have how? The substitute passed them all out yesterday. Oh. His eyes flicker open a second as he connects some internal dots. The word on the street is that some new kid got concussed so hard he had to leave early. Did, did the street at least mention I was doing well before that? Oh, of course not. You're Mr. Nito then. Yes, sir. Given the circumstances, I'll let it slide. For now, why don't you share with one of your classmates? Oh boy. After class, I'll write you a note that can give you that you can give to the librarian. Oh hey Blaze. Finally looking at chat. <laughs> yeah, you're gonna hear me stumble my words constantly. But I'm trudging on. Thank you, sir. I kind of regret being so late because the only person I can realistically share is with the person to my side. So, uh, hey. Oh no, there she is! Of course. Got a drink. <laughs> Wait a minute. Wasn't she the one speeding through the hallway yesterday? Just like back then, I feel her gaze, piercing and cold, as if she's not even seeing me next to her. Would it be okay to share the book? It will only be for today. Instead of a response, she lets out a defeated low groan like I just spit in her cereal. <laughs> then her huddles back over to her page. Oh gee, sorry I asked. It's only the first real day, maybe I won't need it. Olivia, come on, share with him this one time. I already told him I'd personally resolve the issue. Just help me out here, alright? Wheelchair Dino Lady, yeah. She's the star of the show. <laughs> uh. Oh, my camera can't capture that. Uh, let me get more lighting in here. Probably help to light the place. Dark. There we go. Be like, oh. <laughs> she responds by making a show of sighing deeply while rolling her head back and around. Ordinarily, there'd be a groan go with the gesture, but she remains silent. Her head hangs low in defeat, and she nudges the book for a few centimeters closer to me. Er, thanks? I slide my own desk closer to her, just enough so I can read the page. While our teacher or orates the page as if reading from Death of a Hunter, I follow along while simultaneously trying to capture anything that stands out in my notebook. A lot more difficult than expected as Mr. Eidekin seemed to put emphasis on every word he spoke. I'm going to butcher that name every time I read it. I feel like I was just copying the whole the page wholesale. I turn my eyes from the book to the girl's notes and scritch, scritch, scritch. Those are some very murderous looking claws on her fingertips. For a split second, I see them retract. She wisp she wipes her fingertips on a small hand towel and whoa, the claws extend again into a puddle of red on her desk. A singular red-colored claw is pressed on her paper for a moment, quickly tugged and twirled and twisted, leaving behind a bright red cursive sentence on the page. Cool. Those, sil those silver iris flick irises flick my way once more. What? Uh, what are you doing? That looks pretty cool. A hint of red creeps across the girl's cheeks. She looks back at the book and hunches her shoulders as high as she even Dino Lee can. Oh, Kai Robinson, hey, how are you doing? 
Huh? She's now leading up. She's now leaning over her notes, too, even using the book as extra protection for the pages. I should be focusing on my own notes. Yeah. An impossible task now, though, as colorful calligraphy next to me has piqued my curiosity. The quill talon continues to delicately etch each note into the page. And it only leaves the page to dip into what looks like a tiny paint palette at the edge of her desk. The claws extend again, and now there's a faint rumbling. Brrr. Hey! I hadn't meant to get caught up in it. Sorry, uh... I wait for her to give me a name. She doesn't. She simply returns to her focus on the book between us. I wonder what her deal is. In either case, I turn my attention back to class. I hope I can make up for lost time. It's hard to ignore the gator girl, though. Especially when those icy gray eyes of hers feel like icicles poised to stab through me. Hey, wait a second. Those hand motions. She's not writing something right now. She's drawing. Well, it's none of my business. But I am rather curious. I make a show of leaning back to yawn. Let me just camera a little bit more there we go now i can see it's whoa it's a calligraphic duel of me there's no mistaking it that's my jacket and sunglasses that's pretty cool nobody's ever really drawn me before well there was those others on the first day of school but that's different they weren't using their own claws or ink oh man i can't wait i gotta ask for a closer look hey Your picture's super cool. Can I see it? <laughs> she glares me in the eye, but slowly brings the sheaf she was doodling on. With the light still dim, I barely make out all the important details. The line work is sharp. Each stroke an organic curve that when combined formed when combined formed what had to be me. It even had my glasses in the negative space of the head. Though, what was with the multiple swervy lines coming out of my drawing's head? Dude, this is great. She rolls her eyes and starts retracting the page. Can I take a picture of it? Pause. Why? Nobody's ever done something like that for me. I want to remember it. She passes the paper over to me. It's yours. Whoa, really? Thanks. Don't mention it. What? Don't. Hmm. She's nice. After a grueling period made worse by my own anxiety, the bell rings to set us free. Finally, freedom at last. Just stay for a minute longer, Inko. I get some sideways glances from other students as I leave, no doubt suspecting I'm a teacher's pet already. A few strokes from his pen, I Idekin hands me a note. Just show this to the librarian and she'll hand you your books. On your way now. A quick trip to the library earns me my missing books. I even got a fancy laminated library card. Ikadin's introduction to his class certainly has me excited for photography next. First stop, though. Lunch. Can't take pictures on an empty stomach. Between my lackluster breakfast and gym class, I'm practically starving. Despite my hunger, though, I'm stopped dead in my tracks as I look around the cafeteria for a place to sit. I know how that feels. The whole place is overtaken by lawless anarchy. I've never seen a riot this intense. Ah, a few students have even crawled halfway up the wall, hanging by the decorative vines. Food flies about everywhere, util utilized as ammunition rather than sustenance. Although the security guard by the door isn't moving, this must be acceptable? I shudder to think what would be bad enough to warrant him taking action. I've never seen anything like that in any of my old schools. 
But more, but more importantly, all these cliques have already formed from the previous day. I miss my chance to sit with anybody. Wait, it's only the second day. Why am I acting though? It's too late for anything. Yo, Nico! I'm shoulder checked from behind by what feels like an oversized fist or an undersized boulder. If I weren't already by a wall, I would have been either been sent sprawling or made into roadkill again. When I turn around about, I met with Damien's toothy grin. Ow, what? What? Already forgot about me? You don't got anywhere to be, right? I, uh, yeah. You stuttered. Come on, we're going somewhere. Might as well, right? Damien excitedly motions at me to follow through the traffic of students going about the lunchroom. Peering through the crowd, waving me over and disappearing again like he's outrunning something. It's a good thing I hadn't gotten my own lunch yet. It'd be dumped on the ground about three elbows in a slap ago. Through the clamoring, I hear something about a turf war restarting with the new year and that the Megalodons will continue to rule. Somewhere mixed, in the, is, somewhere mixed in is the undeniable sound of a steel chair clattering to the ground. The place is an actual war zone now. How on earth is Damien able to weave through these guys so easily? Eventually, he leads me to the far corner of the room and to his usual lunch table. Hey, you're alive. I think one of my ribs is cracked. That's just the school spirit you're feeling. Oh. Uh, I feel less like a person and more like a... I finished stretching my wounded back and actually checked the table. It's basically empty. There's only one other person here. Oh no. Oh no. <laughs> the gator girl gives an unamused raised brow. Uh, hey. You? Oh snap, you know Olivia? Olivia, right, yeah. The one and only. Why did you tell me you met already? Because I only sorta of did? We're in the same class. Ah, okay, I get it now. Still, that sounds awesome. All my lunch buddies are the artists. Oh, all my lunch buddies are artists. All? Oh yeah, there's usually a third in our group, but she's screwing out around in the school business. She'll probably be back tomorrow. Student council stuff can't take that long, right? What's she, uh, what's she need with the student council? Oh, she doesn't need anything with the student council. She's in it. She's the treasurer. The treasurer? Something like that. What do you think, Olivia? Olivia just grunts in reply. <laughs> she doesn't even bother to look up from her lunch tray. Aren't you an artist too, Damien? Nah, I don't go I don't got the patience to sit around for hours like that. So you're not taking advantage of the art programs here? Don't really need them. Home's just real close by. Only other artist here today is Olivia. His arms wave over Olivia as she, as if he was presenting her at an auction or something. <laughs> For her part, the gator girl just grunts again. Well, what do you do then, Olivia? Finally, she looks up, turning an indifferent look my way. Did she say something? What was that? The ambient war noises are a bit too loud. Can't hear a thing. Sorry, I can't hear anything you're say saying over the... Don't sweat it, she's just the real quiet type. I PAINT! Whoa, hey. Holy hell, her voice sounds so raspy. As if she never drank a drop of water in her life. Guess I hadn't noticed before when she gave those one-syllable responses. For someone's voice to be strained from a single shout... She furrows her brow and looks down, back down at her lunch. Oh snap, we've been standing around for a while. Whew. He sits back in his own seat and takes a huge bite of mystery meat steak. Alright, food. 
After the workout and the poor breakfast today, I'm particularly famished now. But the line, all eyes look to where the lunch line should be. And it's become a full-blown riot. Someone's got a fire extinguisher trying to stop it. Oh, I probably should have waited for you to get yours. Oops. Damien returns to his stake rather aggressively. Who am I to question the dino etiquette in the act of using one's foot to anchor the food for tearing? Suddenly, the sound of squeaking rubber draws both of our attentions to both of our attention towards Olivia. She's holding onto one of her wheels, having just skidded across the granite floor. Oh, what's up? She tilts her head back towards the courtyard door behind us. It looks like there's a few vending machines out there. Huh, I guess I'll check them out. I leave the group behind to go try and get lunch. Holy cow, so much reading. I got a drink. Ah. Oh boy, not a fan of soda and chips for a meal, but it's enough for wartime survival. Hey, this thing accepts credit cards. Handy. I pick out a few brands I recognize, enough to tide me over for the rest of the school day. I bend to pick up the bags from the dispenser slot and... That green chick's looking at me. She notices me gazing at her and hunches over again hurriedly. What's that all about? Right, making new friends. I buy a few extra sodas for the table. Carrying everything back in both arms, I place them on an empty spot, sliding a can of soda to Damien. He looks at me like I just tossed him a gold bar. <laughs> Whoa, dude! The Dillo boy's mouth opens wide as he chomps on the bottom of the can, his fangs piercing the thin metal and spraying its contents down his gullet. I toss some over to Olivia as well. She eyes it as though it were booby-trapped before taking a bag of chips. Damien sighs happily as he chucks the shredded remains of his can away. Mmm, <clears throat> caffeine ambrosia. What were we talking about before? Olivia's art, right. She's really good, Inky. Like, you wouldn't believe. Can he at least stick to a nickname? Really? Oh, totally. She's, like, won awards and stuff. She has? Oh, I bet you she was the one who drew that artwork at the, like, the near start. Can I see them? In fact, I could snap some glamour shots for you. No need, dude. I already got pictures on my phone. No, I mean, hold on. I pick my backpack up from the floor, unzipping it and retrieving my beloved camera from it. I'm actually into photography. The Dino Man reaches for the well-aged DSLR, and on instinct I swat his hand away. I know how that is. Hey! Sorry, force of habit. What do you think, Olivia? She eyes me up and down with the same furrowed brow. Aren't you the guy that ate dirt in gym yesterday? Oh, I can actually choose. <laughs> oh boy. I shoot Damien a quick dirty glance before returning to look, to look at Olivia. <laughs> it wasn't that bad. It was pretty bad. It wasn't. And how does everyone seem to know about it? Damien looks aside sheepishly. I may have had a hand at spreading the story around. <laughs> I thought it was funny! Don't worry though, everyone has some embarrassing story. One time I got my frills stuck in the bathroom stall. I uh, didn't need to know that. It took him over an hour to get out. See, everybody's got something. Olivia pops a chip into her jaws, her face looking out to nowhere as if she's thinking of something. Hmm. Damien leans close to me. One of his frills extend to hide from Olivia. Dude, I haven't seen her talk this much during lunch since last year. She said three things and one of them was a grunt. Why the secrecy? It's like a secret meeting. 
those are cool uh-huh but yeah this is something else she really she's really warming up to you i can tell he sits back down properly honestly this whole thing is a little creepy she's probably not a bad person to talk to but damien isn't helping any as eager as I am to make new friends this year, this definitely is not how I want, thought it would pan out. Maybe it's best I get through lunch quickly and quietly. At least I have a spot to sit during lunch. Not like I'd have any other options. Ah, there you are, Inko. A voice rings out to greet me, which catches our attention. I see a familiar, bespeckled face walk over to us with a lunch tray in his hands. Glad to see that you've made it to lunch this time. Oh, hey, Ben. I'm guessing you and Inky here are already met. Mm-hmm. Introduced myself after I bumped into him the other day. Speaking of bumps, you should have seen Inky here yesterday. Damien lets out a cackle and slaps me on the back, igniting the gym pains in my body and almost knocking my glasses off. Ben gives a concerned half-smile. This must be my internal torment for the rest of the semester. Yeah, about yesterday. Ben looks down the aisle of chatting students and signals to someone with his head. Standing ten feet away from us is an imposing looking dinosaur girl with blonde hair, crimson scale, and sporting a fiery red leather jacket. Ben uses his hand to usher her over while also mouthing a hushed, come on. Ugh. Oh god, it's Mia. She slowly makes her way over, and I notice how some of the students begin to quiet down as she passes them by. It's the Naomi ripoff. As she gets closer, her intense presence invades me. And even though we're about the same height, I feel like an ant about to get crushed under her boot. Somewhere in my synapses next her face to me ta tasting bright red rubber yesterday i really wish i hadn't inko uh mia here has something to say to you mia stays silent but continues to glare at me from under her neatly cut fringe she sucks in air through her teeth sorry the corner of the girl's lips start to rise. Didn't mean to knock your lights out. The girl lets out a laugh and lays an arm around my shoulder, her smile growing wider. Heat creeps along my face as her muzzle nears my ear, especially a puff of hot air blows by the lobe. The heat is torn away, though, when I feel her fingers dig roughly into my shoulder, and her sharp hiss of a whisper scrapes my eardrum. That ball was me being nice, Baldy. Screw the class over again, and I'll fucking end you! Nodding in understanding, Mia pushes away from me with a small cheer. See? All clear now, Benny boy. Can I go now? Uh, Mia, that's not quite... Shut it, glasses. I'm fixing things here. You're making it worse. Oh, well, fuck you, then. I <laughs> uh, see there's the, the other fang. <laughs> she flips us off collectively and backs into the crowd, vanishing before either one of us could fully process her words and actions. Damien nudges my side. Dude, I think she likes you. Ben sighs. Sorry about that, Inko. I heard earlier about what happened at PE and connected the dots. It's fine, it's just dodgeball, not like she was looking to do something. Yeah. Uh, Damien? Hmm? Damien looks up from the rest of his meal, having selectively heard his name. He wasn't even paying attention, how? Could you not spread rumors about you, your fellow classmates? No worries, Nico and I are cool. That still doesn't make it right. Uh, sure, yes sir, yeah. 
gives Ben a lazy salute. Ben merely sighs as he places his tray on the table and makes himself com comfortable on the seat next to me. As he settles in, Ben notices my camera, still out on the table. Oh, is this your camera, Inko? Uh, oh yeah, I was showing it to Damien and Olivia earlier. May I? I feel my instincts kick in for a moment before remembering that Ben also works with cameras. Sure, have a look. I watch as Ben gingerly picks up my camera and gives it a thorough inspection. I must say, as far as standard cameras go, yours is a good quality. It's nothing too special, really. Just something I picked up a while back. Well, you got good taste in camera models. He hands me back my camera, to which I place it back into my backpack. Thanks. With something like that, it'd be easy to get some great shots. Well, I do have a small collection of a portfolio drive. Portfolio? Oh man, I'd only just got mine a month ago. I bet you got like dozen pieces to choose from for the New Year's art contest. The what? You missed that announcement. What announcement? The school has an annual art contest at the start of every New Year. The winner gets a small cash prize, but the bigger the prize is the fact that the winner's piece is submi submitted for publication in a couple big-time magazines, and there went Olivia. Oh. Oh, wow. That sounds awesome. Of course. That also means a lot of students plan ahead and work all summer for something to submit. Did you do anything for it, Ben? You know it. Oh, well, good luck. Liz said she turned in the perfect piece yesterday. Okay, now I'm interested. Finally, a chance to show my real skill at something I'm good at. Hey, Olivia could help you out. With your shots and her art, you two could totally win. Right, Olivia? <laughs> Olivia? We all turn our heads to Olivia, only to realize that she's disappeared. When did she leave? Confused, I scan around the cafeteria and my eyes manage to spot her through the crowd of students. She's rolling away towards the cafeteria doors and quickly. Just like that, I lose sight of her as fast as I had seen her. I turn to look at Damien and Ben. Damien not only looks puzzled, but also disappointed for some reason. Ben, meanwhile... Well, he almost looks annoyed that Olivia left. Guess she hasn't changed. So it seems. The venomous sting to his words make me feel like there's more going on than I'm aware of. I decide not to try and pry into it, instead bring the conversation back. Well, I still want to try. You can upload your submission on the school's website. Oh, then I'll need an account. You don't have one? I don't think so. I've been told they'll get me that stuff by the end of the week. Sounds about right. Truthfully, it takes about maybe five minutes at most to deal with that. Then why the wait? Nobody wants to deal with it. Guess I'll wait then. Ben scratches the side of his head. Uh, I think there's someone in Stuco that can help you out actually. It's the treasurer's duty day today. So that's where Liz ended up. I don't know any names, so maybe? Huh, guess I get to meet Liz sooner than rather than later. I think I'll take care of that before lunch is over then. See you in class, Ben. Sure thing. Later, Damien. Deuces, man. Tell Liz I said hi. I grab some of the leftover snacks from the table in my backpack and head out of the cafeteria. Finally, I can show off my skills. Show that I'm just as capable as an artist as anyone else here. Alright, I'm going to take a quick bathroom break because holy cow. Um, let me hit my BRB screen. I will be back from the bathroom.
All right. Um, is anyone even still here? <sighs> All right. Back to the back of the game. Yes. <laughs> Thanks for being here, Juan. The computer lab is an offshoot room for a library. As for the library itself, aside from the expected emphasis on the anatomy drawing guides and the like, it's pretty standard. Not to brag, but the school I was at for my freshman year and junior years had a library with two floors. Probably should have read the, probably should have read a thing or two with all those resources. Wow, so nice. <laughs> I'm getting off topic. The computer lab is the focus. Wow, I, I've, <laughs> they make Inko look so short compared to the background. Calm tranquility of the library is overtaken by the organized sterile... 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 <laughs> tongue twister here. The sterility, or whatever, I'm, I'm not gonna... <laughs> of the lab. 40 standardized sets of computers and monitors line the walls, forming a piano panopticon around the desk reserved for the teachers in the middle. And they're going to really broacher me here. I remember them being organized different, differently in elementary school, but for a few years now, I've just been seeing this formation. It sounds like to me, someone's got caught too, one too many times working on more risque art pieces. The monitors are all turned on, but only one's logged in. Weird, there's nobody here. Damien and Ben said Liz would be here, though. Maybe she's in the bathroom? I'm not one to pry and snoop around, but I'm really pressed for time here. On screen, I see PDFs and documents open. They look finance-related and filled with abbreviations and jargon. Nothing I can even understand. Maybe I can figure out how to create my account on my own. Oh boy, there she is. What are you doing? Ah! Haunted high school! I, uh, didn't mean to scare you. Oh. Oh, thank Christ. Just a dino girl with an extremely long neck and not a specter. No, really, what were you doing to the fiscal report I was working on? I didn't do anything. <laughs> I've been working on that all day. Why did you touch it? I didn't. I only minimized it. I swear. Right. I'm here for a reason. Uh, are you Liz? The Brachiosaurus furiously reopens all her windows for a while. And for a while types out some information before acknowledging me again. Excuse me? I wanted to submit something for an art contest going on, but I don't have my login, school login info yet. Ben told me you'd be able to help. Ben, huh? Well, Ben and Damien. Huh. She mumbles something beneath her breath and turns her head back to me. Yeah, I'm Liz. Oh god. <laughs> Whoa. Inko. But yeah, I'm new here, so I need an account. Oh, well, that's no trouble at all. Liz sits down and cracks her knuckles as she starts typing away at the keyboard. Alright, I'll see if I can get that done for you. In a flourishing display of a spreadsheet software experience, Liz navigates and organizes several documents in seconds. I've always had the general idea that there were a lot of shortcuts and commands, but yeesh! So, you're an artist too? Uh, since you want to enter the contest so bad. Oh yeah, I'm a photographer. Yeah? Y how are you liking it here so far? It's pretty good, although I feel bad about missing most of the first day. Uh, it's not your fault. Guess not. Although, truth be told, I see those paintings paintings framed in the hall by the principal's office, and it does put a lot of bit of rain on my parade. I'm butchering all of this. Maybe it's just time to drink. Oh yeah, those. I get what you mean. 
I think it's like that by design, honestly. Something about breaking the students' egos. Then you end up wanting to prove like crazy so you can reach your goals. At least, that's what happened to me. Your goals? Yeah, I'm planning on going to university and getting degrees in design and business. Then I'll open up my own advertisement company. Ambitious. Don't see how anyone can afford not to be. You? Oh god, I'm going to be an influencer blogger and be crazy popular. I'm going to publish a photography magazine. I don't know, but it's going to be big. Well, let's keep it realistic. Hmm. Oh, that's something. More than a lot of people here. What's that mean? Like, half the school may just as well be in a daycare. Sorry if that sounds rude. Like, they aren't taking advantage of the programs here? Yeah, some don't. Like a friend of mine. You mean Damien? Yeah, I shouldn't have mentioned it. Ah, well, I hope he hasn't been causing you any trouble. It can be a bit, bit of a silly billy sometimes. Trouble is a bit of an understatement. He's definitely the friendly type. He even partnered with me in gym and dragged me along to sit with him at lunch. Is that so? Yeah, he was really excited about it too. He's really welcoming, welcoming me into his lunch friend group thing. Liz sighs. Not this again. What? I'm guessing he introduced you to Olivia as well. Well, we share a class, but I didn't get a proper introduction until lunch. Oh boy, I'm sorry about that, Inko. What, is Damien messing with me? No, no, Damien is great. He's just maybe a little too eager. If he considers you a friend to him, he'll want to be... He... <laughs> he'll want you to be our friend, too. Specific... <laughs> Specifically, he'll want you to be Olivia's friend. What's wrong with that? Nothing, nothing at all. But you've seen Olivia. You can probably tell she's a bit... unresponsive. Doesn't really like to talk to anyone. Not even Damien. So you can definitely try to be her friend, but just know that she'll most likely ignore you. You don't like Olivia? What? No, I do. She's fine, I guess. I sit with her at lunch, after all. And I'm sure you'll get along with us just fine. And hey, I'd love to see ma Olivia make a new friend. Just don't get too invested trying to get her to warm up to you. There's history to that warning. Why does she stick around, then, if she doesn't want to be friends? Oh, Damien didn't mention? They live together. They're... siblings? Not exactly. You'll have to ask him about it. Huh. Damien's just also... Damien's also just incredibly patient and outgoing. I envy him. But yeah, he would love nothing more than everyone getting along like best buddies. Unless you're like Damien, then you can be pleasant to be a brick wall forever. Your time is probably better spent elsewhere. So, how serious are you about your amb ambitions? Pretty serious, I think. Liz nods. Something to keep in mind, then. It's a struggle, but Damien, like Damien says, we gotta keep trying, right? This gives me a half-hearted smile, but she seems sad about something. Anyways, sorry for talking your ear off about private matters. You still want to get that submission turned in? She stops for... A second on one tab to, st to scan for something. Man, I'm really butchering it today. And got it. She motions her head to back the room at the printer as it comes to life. I get up and get the paper. Both my username and password here are strings of numbers. I take a snapshot of the username and password so I won't have to remember it. Thanks. Anyways, you should hurry. Lunch is ending soon. <clears throat> All right, according to the times displayed on the monitor, I only got 10 minutes left. I followed the instructions on the printout, finally getting the student hub on the site, and thankfully the art contest is displayed prominently across it. 
Clicking through a couple of links, I finally find the submission instructions. It's simply a matter of putting my entry details in the name of the file and dragging it into the school's shared drive. Plugging in my poor... Plugging in my portable portfolio hard drive, I create a copy of my magnum opus. Then a quick rename, drag it here, and uh, the class, just in time. I take the extra minute to safely undock my hard drive and then log off the computer. Looking back to Liz, she's completely wrapped up in her work. Don't think interrupting her is a good idea, especially after what she said about Olivia in our own time. I opt to simply leave her be, heading over to the room and the library for class. After all, it's a time for the class. It's time for the class I've been looking for forward to the most. <clears throat> this day is certainly turning out better than yesterday. Hope I just didn't jinx it for myself. My nerves have been acting up when I first stepped back into the classroom. Made even worse when I was hit with another flashbang. A sky again? After my 20 other classmates had finished laughing, Mr. Eidekin made a show of waving a freshly taken po photo from a fancy fold-up camera from the 70s. And I'm just slaughtering it all. <laughs> I dubbed this portrait the Student Send Polis. I don't know. I don't know anymore. After he thumbtacked the shot on the corkboard filled with poor snapshots of everyone else, Mr. I Eidekin reassured me and sat me right next to Ben. He managed to sum up his syllabus under a minute, instead taking the majority of the time to go over our first lesson and assignment to exposure and lighting. With each new light fixture he brought out and explained <laughs> With each new light fixture he brought out and explained, I felt my mind swirl faster with new possibilities of old shots. If only I had that then, or if I could have used that there. Now that you've had a small taste of it, we'll start on your first photography assignment. Proper lighting. I'm practically sal salivating at the thought. Mr. Eidekin had just finished his first lesson where he handed out all sorts of equipment to look over. It's the first time I've handled some of these things, like the enormous box light that was still taking up the entirety of my desk. Remember, though, that these are just tools meant to enhance the photo. You can highlight a turd all you want, but it's still a turd. A crude language guarantees a chortle from a few half-listening students. The teacher looks over to the clock and hums. Well, I see that we managed to finish this le lecture a tad bit early. Why don't you take all these last 10 minutes to compare notes? Maybe even consider doing the assignment as a collab piece with a classmate. The room is quick to fill with the sound of chatter. I wonder if I... Hey. I turn to Ben and see his eager grin. Do you want to do a joint piece? Since you don't know any good spots in the school and all. I pull out the assignment sheet from beneath the lightweight desk. Lightweight light on my desk and give it a quick scan. Present a set of photos demonstrating your understanding of proper lighting. You are allowed to borrow one lighting tool must take the shot on school premises and I swear I've handed this out this I've handed out this assignment for years now if one more student t just takes a picture of the hallway outside the classroom I'm going to personally throw them over the railing be original please I've got the perfect place for it if we work together we can even use two items the offer is too tempting sure I hold out my hand and Ben takes it and shakes it, sealing the pact. My face is feeling weird from all the smiling today. But in truth, I'd be enjoying Mr. Eidekin's class so much I couldn't stop. It feels like I've let the I've it feels like I've the entire world to gain from Mr. Eidekin's lesson. And the entire world to explore seeing as ever since the move I hadn't had time to actually explore the vault 
Volcatera Bluffs. Man, I'm butchering everything. Sure, on occasion I go out with my own... I go out on my own to parks and stuff, but who doesn't? Besides, I'd be pretty lame photographer if I didn't go out and find stuff to photograph. And you know what? I've been meaning to do a little looking around here. So to everyone else, this assignment makes them have to explore the school, but I get to. Pretty sweet deal if I do say so myself. The hall outside of the classroom is the only one major photo op. Between that and the murals outside, I'm certain to find something cool. God, almost two hours in already of this stream. Nope, the murals won't work on their own. Since it was my first thought to use them, that means it's likely someone else's first thought. I need to think outside of the box a bit. Think of some some way to use the school's architecture to my advantage in a way that... Inko! My thoughts are disrupted by a worried-looking Ben. Maybe you should see a doctor, man. Head injuries are no laughing matter. I'm fine. What were you saying? I was asking how you were doing, you know, with school and classes now. Oh, right. Doing good. Really good, actually. A class I'm 100% enjoying, the beginnings of some genuine friendships. Compared to the disaster of my first day, today has been astoundingly positive. That's good to hear. Yeah, I've got- I've even got some friends now. Great, oh. And what about your art submission? Was Liz able to help you? Something nibbling at the corner of my thoughts at the mention of the long-necked girl. Yeah, she gave me my login stuff and everything. Uploading this mission was a piece of cake after all. Awesome! That, would, that does make you competition now. Both Liz and I have pieces in the running too. She told me she had some submitted something. Yeah, I'm a bit concerned and said she didn't have much time to prepare anything, but... Hey, everyone's got a chance. You never know. Yeah, she was pretty cool about it too. That whole friend group is pretty welcoming. I think I'm pretty lucky. Lucky? Ben seems perplexed by my statement. You said something at lunch when Olivia vanished. I'm noticing I'm noticing for a silent paraplegic, she sure has a lot of people upset. You've got some hidden drama with her too? No, not really. Wait, two? Who? Idakin calls out to us, striding over to inspect. I take it you gentlemen are cons conversing about your assignment together. Uh, of course, Mr. Idakin. We were just discussing where we take our picture, right, Ben? Well, that's good, then. I think you guys weren't talking about something off topic, like gossip. That would be pretty embarrassing to use all your time right off the bat, I think. Especially considering you're currently the subject of some fairly humorous gossip, aren't you, Mr. Nito? I'm awash in a wave of shame from his words. I look at Ben. I can see he feels it as well. If the air around, if the air around someone needs clearing, clear it yourself. Idikin has a point. Maybe once friendships are... Once a friendship is established, I can learn more about her. I'm for class. Alright, off you go now, and remember to get your assignments done by the end of the week. The room empties out slowly. Most of my peers still chatting and discussing their plans for the assignment. Before I can continue talking with Ben about our own project, the Stuco president is already packed up and exiting the room. Guess we'll talk later then. Packing up my own notebook, I wave goodbye to my new favorite teacher and head off to my next class. Walking into history class for the first time, and it's about what I expect it to look like. Pictures of historical figures, small relics from various regions, and cartography of the Earth during its stages of the continental drift. Though I notice that there's a distinct lack of teacher in class. Must be finishing up their lunch, I assume. Well, better get a good seat now before they're all taken. Eeny, meeny, miny. This one. 
I settle myself into my chosen desk and pull out my history book and notebook, along with a pencil. As the classroom fills with more and more students, it becomes a blur of vibrant scales. A few minutes pass and I'm still wondering where the teacher is. Oh boy. The, sudden, the suddenness of the door slamming opens, open stops any and all noise. It's quiet enough to hear a pin drop. Figure walks into the classroom and... Oh, sweet heaven, no. He stands there and stares down at everyone. Menace! Oh, no! It's Sully! He's the history, te He's the history teacher, too? Thanks for walking me to my classroom, Sully. Of course, Miss Brockling. Oh, thank Raptor Jesus. He isn't our teacher. The Raptor woman adjusts her glasses and she scans around the room before looking down at the paperwork in her hands. Looks like we'll be having some late arrivals, but let's get down to business. I know that I introduced myself yesterday, but for any of those who weren't here, her momentary glance at me makes me believe Solly told her about my absence. My name is Miss Prockling, and this is history class. In this course, we will be learning about the history of our prime primeval ancestors and their advancement in through history. You can even say that it will be like going back in time. Doesn't that sound exciting? Despite her admittedly forced enthusiasm, everyone in class responds with uninteresting murmuring. Not sure why though. This sound. This all sounds exciting. Sorry. <laughs> she walks over to her desk and places down her pile of folders before flipping open her own special version of the history book. With the click of a button, she also turns on the projector to reveal a prepared slideshow for today's lecture. To learn about the extensive history of Saurians and their culture is something I've yearned for. If you can turn your books to page 36, we will begin with the first chapter detailing the earliest interactions between Saurians and hominids. Oh, that sounds interesting. Oh, I dropped my bottle cap down here and I gotta go get it. There we go. I think I jinxed myself. Miss Prockling's history class is the polar opposite to Eidekin's photography class. While her introductions to the class engaged me at first, things have slowed down to an unbearably slow crawl. My eyes scan over the introductory text of the first chapter. Despite the tension between the two groups, human settlers to the New World would continue to make overtures of trade for the native Velociraptor tribes. Pretty sure I've read this line three times now. I tear my eyes away from the page in hopes of blinking the boredom away. I look up to see the teacher staring down at various papers on her desk with laser focus. I must have stared too long though, because I ended up locked in a staring contest with Prockwin. She raises an eyebrow at me. Okay then, right. Write down notes of pages 3 through 7 about the discovery of the new world. Without even fully comprehending the words before me, I'm copying the page down to the letter in my notebook. Absent-mindedly, I begin to recall everything that's happened so far with my new classmates. Ben carries himself with a lot of refinement and is easily my first pick as a photography partner. But that Mia girl, she doesn't seem to want to make friends. Of course, I couldn't have figured that out from the cold look she gave me yesterday, not to mention the rude hand gestures. Damien's very friendly, even if he can be a bit too enthusiastic sometimes. And though my encounter with Liz was brief, I can tell she's dependable. My progress in making friends has been pretty good, all things considered. But then there's Olivia. So far she's still an enigma, and coupled with the apparent history she has with others, it makes me all the more curious about her. Liz said it'd be a bad idea to get invested, but in the end it's effectively gossip and hearsay. This had, this had come as something as a shock to me, but... And what do we have here, Miss Halford? The sudden, the sudden voice of Miss Prockling snaps me out of my thoughts. I lean my head to see the teacher looking down at... Olivia. <laughs> Wait a minute, Olivia's here too? As luck would have it, I share not one, but two classes with Olivia. I must have been so jaded from trying to read this text 
textbook that I didn't even notice the girl in the wheelchair. She sits in the front row, diagonally from me. And I don't think she's noticed the strange twist of fate herself. Only the second day of school and already doodling in class, she proceeds to pick up the piece of paper from Olivia's desk. Looks like she's been drawing on it, though I can't tell what they're from, from where I'm sitting. Listen, Olivia, I know history isn't the most exciting subject to learn, but could you at least pretend that you're taking notes? The only response I hear from Olivia is a heavy sigh before leaning her head back down. While the teacher returns to sul skulking around the room, Olivia hunches over the a notebook. God, I'm butchering again. That means more drinking. Although I don't think those are notes she's taking. Nah, no one would do something like that with the Tataralian teacher patrolling the room. It's an attempt to get us all to focus, but... I'm fighting a losing battle to keep my eyelids from shutting. My jaw is clenched tight to suppress a yaw loud yawn building inside, even as Miss Prockling skulks right past me. Just before my drowsiness can overtake me, though, I notice, I notice minute movement in the corner of my eye. I, I, <laughs> I'm still butchering it. One of my classmates glances up at the teacher whose eyes are roving over the opposite side of the room and down the scr to scribbling something down. The paper is then folded into a neat little note and I watch as the next person carefully unfolds the sheet and also scribbles on it before folding it and passing it along again. Curiosity thoroughly peaked. I, ain't, I waited anxiously for my in my seat for the paper to get to me. It's a dangerous game passing the note along so Prockling doesn't see. If I'm participating, does that make me a slacker? The student to my side moves his, makes his move to toss the note over. Prockling starts tur turning around right then. He flinches and drops the hot potato on my desk in a flash. I nearly slam my own paper over the page to cover it from sight. Miss Prockling continues to lecture about how the raptors and humans eventually started to get along because they traded narcotic leaves or something like that. <laughs> oh boy. And as you can see on the board here... Now! I left my paper. Luckily, there's plenty of space left. As for what, out, for what everyone else has drawn, a not-so-solid attempt at a race car, rough sketches of some eyes, a bunch of doodles, Names in various styled fonts I can only describe as graffiti, and, uh, of course, it's not high school unless someone hasn't drawn a penis on it. <laughs> Miss Prockland with stink lines coming off of her. Yeesh, better not get caught with this. That being said, I'm drawing a blank. What should I draw? I don't exactly doodle every day. Watch, gonna give us a choice. Oh? No? Hmm? Drawing stuff for others is a nice gesture. Maybe I'll try to break the ice a bit, although I don't really know anything about her. Hey, it can't hurt to try though, yeah? I can think of a few things to sketch out here. Let's see. Uh, oh no, no. Oh no, no. Oh. Mm. Uh. Oh man, you can't put me on the spot like this! No! Uh, okay. I'm just, I'm gonna be really bad. Uh, YouTube play button. <laughs> I don't even, I don't care. <laughs> I'm not an artist. And done. I didn't have a lot of room to really work with, but as I serpentiquously admire my work, I find that I have a really long way to go. It feels like I'm being mogged by the other doodles. All right, Olivia sure like it. Olivia sure to like this. This prockling is still turned around. All right, if I slip the paper over Olivia's shoulders, I won't have to get up and risk being caught. And here we go. It's a bit tricky, and I hesitate, but the paper meets its destination. 
She doesn't even look back. She just takes the paper eagerly. It's completely di it's completely different from how she was acting earlier. Her tail isn't even swaying side to side. Oh, is is that wagging? Huh? All right. Now she's going to see my sketch and possibly think I'm cool. Uh-oh. She's not turning around. Well, it's not much, so it could it could also just I'll be taking that. Miss Prockling snatches the paper from Olivia's claws. She holds her arm out. Oh, Olivia's just getting it today. She takes a glance at the paper, and a small crack of a smile appears on her face before going back to its stoic visage. So this is how you view me, Miss Halford. Prockling holds the paper up for all to see. Everyone in class does their best to avoid her per persecuting gaze. I know that most of you were part of this as well. Look, I'm not asking for much. Please do your assignments while you're in class. It's the least you can do. We were just passing a note at a time. One at a time. She wasn't even paying attention. Yeah, how come all of us are in trouble? I noticed Prockling looked down at Olivia for a moment before letting out a sigh of defeat. Look, since it's only the second day, I'll let, I'll let this one slide, but I'm warning you now that I won't be so lenient the next time it happens. Otherwise, you'll end up like the last student who decided to be disrupted during class. <laughs> what happened to him? Get a detention slip or something? Miss Prockling pulls up the window blinds and pushes the window screen open. She then takes out a walkie-talkie. Solly, yep, another hippie, seat H4. Oh no, uh oh, boyfriend, boyfriend time! <laughs> Good job, soldier. <laughs> now if we can, let's continue. We're on the second floor. I sink back into my seat and continue writing, mainly out of unadulterated fear and experiencing the same wrath from the teacher. Man, now I feel guilty for Olivia. I was the one to pass her the note after all. Maybe I shouldn't have tried. Well, I can always apologize after class. Miss Prockling places the note and continues with her lecture for another half hour. With ten minutes of class left, I see Prockling look at the clock above the door. Then I notice Olivia grabbing her attention as if she knew what she was already going to say to her. The teacher nods her head. Olivia grabs her backpack and shoves all her things into it. Yeah, because you're handicapped, you get to leave class early to get to the next class on time. In silence, she wheels herself off to the door, opens it, and rolls on out. The teacher must have noticed me watching her leave. Accommodations. Well, there goes my chances of saying sorry to her. Feeling defeated, I decide to focus on writing down my writing down my notes for the rest of the time left. Although I do wonder. <clears throat> okay, I'm taking a drink. She must have noticed my doodle. Did she just ignore it then? Class comes and goes, and I head back home on the metro. Watch, watch that drawing come back later. It gets, like, memorialized or some stuff, and just really embarrasses me. Like, oh, wow, this is so wholesome. I remember seeing this. It's just the fucking YouTube play button. Like, goddamn, come on. You can't put me on the spot like that. Another day, another dollar. Although this time, I pass on the mini breakfast burritos. After how bad they messed me up during PE yesterday, I don't want my stomach to endure that torture again. Instead, I just got a few hash browns from the fast food joint by the metro. I idly scroll through my feed, as I usually do, while the metro jostles about to my destination. It's been a few days now, and the strange scent of extremely cheap detergent and alcohol have become an afterthought. Some of the vines that are actually plastic and the flowers that are <laughs> Wait, some of the vines are actually plastic and the flowers are little air fresheners. That's not actually something I've noticed, more so witnessed when a passenger tried eating one. Oof. 
Some of the vines are real, though, for some reason. They go untouched anyway. Maybe they're just not tasty. Vegetarians don't don't eat the grass in their lawns after all. Right? Oh. Well, there he is again. Anyways, the lights have gone out and someone just dropped a wrecking ball next to me. Must be Mr. Ferris. Good morning, Inko. Good morning. Has work been going fine? It has. Slowly, but I'm very thorough. I hate the idea of a place of learning not being the ideal place to learn. And I appreciate your and I appreciate our talks. Your perspective has really helped me understand the student body more. You're welcome. Hey, have you given any more thought to that fashion thing? I have, although I can't say I really get it. There's plenty there's plenty to see everywhere if you just look around. Really? Like what? Well, like, look at the gr look at the girl at the other end of the car there. God, I'm just butchering again. <clears throat> I don't know. We're like, like, no, we're. <laughs> I'll go until three, and if I'm still blubbering on, butchering my stuff, I'll probably just take a break and stream tomorrow. <laughs> it's rather revealing. I don't think that's really for me. I love my wife. <laughs> I love my wife. I just mean as an example. Well, there's an event coming up. I could see about trying something new. What would you recommend? Well, let me guess. We're going to choose. That's a good question. What would be good to use here? In my inner eye, I could conceptualize the co coolest possible Ferris. The fresh machine is going full throttle. First, sunglasses. <laughs> His eyes may be a little too far apart for that. However, Beanie. <laughs> Moving on. Big guns, fresh jacket. <laughs> oh no. There we go, the coolest possible Ferris. Did they actually put did they actually put his hair into like a man bun? <laughs> oh. Yeah, they did. <laughs> Mr. Nito? Sorry, just thinking. Why don't you start with... Oh, God. Jacket. I always start with the jacket. Really, now? This all sound rather expensive. Yeah, they are. You know what? Try a gold chain necklace. A what? Yeah, just make sure it's appropriately sized so it doesn't look silly. I'm sure it would go a long way, and they're pretty cheap to get. Well, alright, I'll take your word for it. We'll sure talk about fashion a lot, but... <laughs> we sure talk about fashion a lot, though. Is that really what all everything's about these days? Oh, of course not. What do you want to know about? <laughs> it's YOLO mean. Oh boy. I've heard the term thrown around recently. That was like five years ago. Oh. Mr. Ferris and I talk more about contemporary urban slang until we arrive at a stop. Oh, I don't know if I'm even going to make it up to three hours. Ah, art. Mr. Eidekin had just started talking about our first project for the class. As soon as he said the word, Olivia's hand had shot up. Her gray eyes practically sparkled in excitement, and a smile threatened to crush the perpetual frown etched on her snout. The girl practically vibrates in her seat as she waves her arm in the air, trying to get the teacher's attention. Eidekin's own smile was strained as he and Olivia engaged in a staring contest with one another. I could only marvel as the two argued with each other without a single word. Eventually, I could end one by turning off the lights and turning on a cheap project projector hanging from the ceiling. And playing a safety video about paint that felt far too graphic for a school setting. I don't think I'll be able to eat barbecue for a while. Oh no. Thoroughly defeated, Olivia crosses her arms and pouts in her seat. 
And that is why we won't be using any more than any of the more exotic materials for any projects, Miss Halford. Uh, maybe I should just skip breakfast entirely. I still don't see the problem. Once you've all had the proper safety handling courses in the second semester, you'll be allowed to use oil-based paints. Until that time, however, all the assignments will require safer supplies. Now, since we pivoted to this, might as well finish the full video. <coughs> uh, <laughs> drinking canteen. The grumpy gator holds a hand to her throat, mumbling to herself as she grabs a mental flask and drinks from it. What do you got in there? The entire display from her was mystifying, at odds with how Ben and Liz described Olivia. In fact, it kind of reminds me of... Me. I can understand why, after all. Ikaden was letting Ben and I use some of his equipment in photography. That thrill of experimentation, of new possibilities. No doubt that it brings creative sparkle to her eyes. Eyes that fill with pure malice as they glare daggers my way. Oh, was I staring? Oops. Before I could offer an apology, she already had her hands on the wheels. She rolls up to Ikenin's desk. He leans forward intently. I can't make out anything that's said through the, through the video, but going by the occasional glare back, it's not hard to imagine. Crap, I really didn't mean to offend. Ikenin notices I'm watching and motions for me to come forward. Slowly, I shift out of my seat and approach the desk. Alright, is there something going on here? Ikenin speaks in a hushed tone, just loud enough for me to hear over the make makeshift manty matinee. Olivia is telling me you're making goofy faces at her. <laughs> no. No, I said he's been staring at me all through class. Huh. It's weird. It's like he's never seen someone like me. Can you move him to a different seat? Now hold on a sec there, Olivia. Let's not get ahead of ourselves. I'm sure this is just a misunderstanding. Ugh. Mr. Ikadan. It's like she's a different person here. She fishes out a canteen of water and brings it to her mouth. Yeah, sure, it's sure it's water in there. I bet you that's water. They're given a lot of leeway when it comes to seating assignment, but asking for something like this? Hmm. I just want him to leave me alone. She sips again. What's that about? Well then, Nico, you tell us. What's on your mind? Can't have disagreements between classmates this early in the year. I'm confused. I didn't know there was any disagreements between us. Well, sometimes it's the little things that you do that don't even think about that affect people the most. Anything like that come to mind? I shake my head. Olivia's glare doesn't diminish away from my field of view. I mean, I've been a bit curious about her since we sit next to each other and I'm friends with some of her friends. We all sat together at lunch yesterday. I could in nods to himself thoughtfully. Sounds like he just wants to hang out, Olivia. Her face scrunches at the mere thought. Eh, not really interested. He's distracting me from classwork. I want to watch the video without being gawked at. Sorry, I didn't mean it. Does that resolve your, the issue for you, Olivia? No, I don't want some buddy in this class. She goes to take another step, but ends up turning the canteen upside down. All out. Uh, Olivia, you can go. Olivia, you can go fill that up if you want. You won't be missing anything. The video is nothing you don't already know, I'm sure. Olivia eyes me suspiciously. <laughs> I can't talk. Suspiciously, and slowly moves out the door towards the nearest water fountain. I get in size. Alright. He leans back in his chair with his arms resting behind his head. 
Inko, I told you yesterday that the air needs cleaning to do it yourself. Now she's in a mood because you were staring at her like a weirdo. And here I thought you two would get along. She even gave you that sketch she made of you. Truthfully, I'm impressed, but here we are. What's going on, big guy? Again, sorry. It's been a pretty it's been a pretty busy few days. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I've gotten into a cool friend group. We're all gonna sit together at lunch. Olivia's there too. She didn't say much, but I got her a soda. I don't know why she's so upset at me. It's nothing personal, Inko. It's not? She's reticent? Especially when it comes to sh especially when it comes to change. If you're at her lunch period too, I can see why she's been she'd be weary of you. Hmm. <clears throat> if you don't mind me asking, Mr. Lacadin. Yes. Why is she so open with you? How do you mean? Just now, she spoke with more she spoke more in that conversation than all the other times I've seen her yesterday. I saw the canteen. I figured it was something to do with her voice, but it's surprising. Her water bottle is the other way around. It's unfortunate, but she really, but she really rarely talks at all. And I guess she just really trusts me. I've known her since she was a freshman. But she lives with Damien, right? He eats at the lunch table and she still barely talks to him. Poor kid. Hope he's doing alright. He seems to be alright. yeah, she's distant to everyone else. So much so... I keep hearing weird things about her. Aikadin leans forward in his chair, suddenly attentive. Is this about you gossiping with Ben yesterday? A bit. He showed up to the table and said something about her being the same after she left. Probably some drama there, but I don't want to pry. He nods. But also, Liz told me some weird things too. He stops nodding. I know of her. Is something wrong? No, no. She just said I shouldn't get invested in being her friend. Everyone's being real weird about it, so I was curious for myself. Guess that's why I was looking at her weird. Sorry. I get in rums his temples. <clears throat> ay, ay, ay. It's worse than I thought. What is? I'll put it this way. You met three people that know Olivia other than me. Of the three, only one thinks highly of her and the other two start unloading drama on anyone willing to listen. In this case, you. No wonder you're confused. I hadn't thought of it like that. I don't blame you. You shouldn't be involved in anything stupid. High schoolers, you know. I guess. Ikenen inhales, collecting his thoughts. Important question, then. Do you really want to be Olivia's friend? Huh? I mean, I guess. A judging eyebrow ra is raised my way. Are you really? Or just curious about her? He seems pretty serious about this. Yes, then. Olivia returns to class and rolls right back up to the desk. Back. Have you changed his desk yet? Akadin nudges his head towards me, expecting, expectingly, prodding me on. I'm sorry I distracted you during class, Olivia. Huh. She looks She looks to Akadin to get a similar nod. Sure. I mean, you're welcome. I mean, thanks. Shit. <laughs> Relatable. But, uh, no, really, I don't want to be distracted. Come on now, Olivia. The least you could do is give him another chance. You never know. I don't really want to know. I get he's, like, friends with Damien. But I don't really want to, you know? Not in this class. But I'd like to be your friend. She stops and raises an eyebrow. Lots of those going around recently. Like she was expecting this response. She looks to Ikadin for help. Actually, Olivia, I also think he'd make a good friend for you. <laughs> what? His words were like a battering ram. I'm simply saying to give Inko a chance here. 
I could almost see the imaginary bulwark she hid behind slowly crumbling from what Aikiden was saying. You are both quite similar at heart, though you might have different methods. Perhaps you'll find some compromise behind cynic cynicism and naivety if you work together. Finally, the last fragments of her imaginary fortress collapse. Olivia can only look at her art teacher with timid confusion painted across her features. Uh, well, I, I don't. Are you for real, Mr. Ikedin? I am. He's actually another. He's actually in another class of mine. I've seen him. He's passionate about his camera like you are with a brush. I do expect great things from him. Uh, okay. Sorry, I really thought, uh, oh, oops. She accidentally bit her tongue. Oh, no. Her mouth is clamped shut. It's just my opinion. You can make your own choices, Olivia. She nods furiously. Oh, the movie's about to end. You two should get back to your seats. We good here? Olivia side-eyes me again and nods once more. Alright. He motions for us to skedaddle. Olivia backs away to her spot. Thanks, Mr. Ikedin. For what? I just gave you an opinion. I'm serious. It's up to the two of you if you want to be friends. Don't screw it up. He waves me off again and gets gets up to flip the lights. <clears throat> I get back to my seat and stare absentmindedly to the projected screen as I digest Ikedin's words. He said he only gave his opinion, but it seems like he also gave me an opportunity to take the right steps in connecting with Olivia. And with what he said about her being passionate with a brush, it's gotten me even more curious about her artistic prowess. Speaking of whom, I noticed that she occasionally gives me a side eye. I don't think she can see my eyes due to the dim lighting combined with my shades. She stares at me with a sense of strange curiosity, almost as if she's trying to get me to read, trying to get a read of me from my face alone. Now from what I can tell by her facial cues, she seems confused as almost shaken up. It's like she wants to say something, but keeps backing away from, at the last second. I guess her mind's also jostling around from Ikedin's words. <clears throat> I'm gonna take a drink. You know what, I'm going to go get more drinks, because now I'm all out. Um, I'm not going to bother with the BRB, I'll, be, I'll just be right back. There we go. Crack this thing open. Perfect. The sudden brightness of the UV lights sting my eyes for a second before they adjust. Alright, normally in your first week we'd be using something simple, like, like a color swatch wheel. However, I think you could all manage something a bit more advanced. The Gator Girls had whipped around at the word advanced. Whatever Olivia was thinking before regarding me seems to be forgotten as she focuses almost entirely on the teacher. Mr. Ikedin holds up a stack of papers for us to see. First things first, I'd like for you to all fill out these topic sheets so that I know you understand how to safely handle oil-based paints. Last thing we need is another burnt down classroom. The way Ikedin says those words makes me imagine some pretty horrible outcomes. Once you've finished your, seat, your sheets, bring them to me so I can review them. I'll be giving you the permission sheet after I know you lot won't set yourselves on fire or poison yourselves. The Allosaur guy in front of me shake. Uh, the Allosaur guy in front of me hands back the stack and I take a page from it before handing the rest of the Diplo girl behind me. My eyes scan over the sheet. What grade... What grade of mass do snouts longer than three inches require? 
the realization hits me. I didn't see the first half of that video. I was just asked to see it after class. My eyes scan, my eyes scan over the page as I groan and see the questions with I have no answers for. All of them pertaining to the dinosaur anatomy. The art teacher looks directly at me and then to the side. I tried to dece decipher his meaning, follow his eyes. Oh. I turn in my seat and lean closer to Olivia. Hey, uh... What? What now? What? What is it? I'm not gonna let you draw me. What the hell? Looking at her paper, I see that she's already answered the questions I couldn't. I show her my own page, tapping the upper section that was still blank. <laughs> Olivia groans and looks to Lackadon pleadingly. All she gets for her troubles is a thumbs up. <laughs> Fuck! Fine. Fine, fine, fine. Here. She holds out her sheet for me. Wait, is it this cheating? Your teacher wouldn't. When, when did he get to his desk? Why does he have a sleeping mask? Hmm. If I look over the answers, I still learn the safety procedures. So what's the difference in the end? That must be what he's thinking. Either that or he doesn't care. I copy the words from Olivia's sheet, doing my best to at least rephrase them. Some of my classmates are already walking up to Aikiden's desk. He's barely reading the pages, not even taking the sleeping mask off. Thanks, Olivia. Whatever. Olivia finishes her page in, the, in a few seconds and wheels herself to the desk too. Last answers I'm fairly confident on. Like what flashpoint means. I get up and go to Aikiden's desk and set my safety assessment down. Good, good. Here's your permission slip to use those Hyacinth's paints. He didn't even bother to look over my worksheet. <laughs> uh, he lifts the eye mask from his face and looks to me with one eye. What? Most of that stuff don't, doesn't apply to you, Inko. Just don't drink the paint or get it in your eyes and you'll be okay. Yes, Mr. Ekadin. boy. Now go back to your desk and wait for the class to end. Tomorrow I'll be starting you all on something simple. Like painting a cube. Or a ball. Yeah, model dodgeball painting. The eye mask drops down and I return to my seat. The class clock reads five minutes until lunch. Olivia's back is leering at me. I consider what I should do or say, or some sort of icebreaker. Mr. Eikonen said we're similar and I can see some of what he means. But I'm a photographer and she's a painter. Hmm. So a cubist and a dadist walk into a bar. And for the other class. And for a drink. Have a good lunch now. The moment the bell rings, Olivia shoves most of her things into her backpack, not caring if her notebook gets crushed. When she zips up, she races out of the classroom. Guess she doesn't want to get caught in the chaos of the lunchroom stampede. Well, here we go. I managed to avoid getting stuck in the frenzy by shuffling along the wall along the long way around the lunchroom. It's a bit longer, but there's a, there's less risk of getting used as an improvised meat club. Hey, why don't I just go through the courtyard? It's right there next to the table. Damn it. Next time. Hey, is there a prom tree or something by the table now? Never seen one with a trunk that's green. I get around to the last of the crowd and approach the table. Damien's here, chowing down on a sandwich stacked with various meats. And like yesterday, Olivia's already at the table. Hey Damien, have you seen you've seen Liz? I thought she was joining us for lunch. Without a word, Damien points to the palm tree next to us. Uh-oh. 
Oh crap, that's no tree. I look up to see Liz's head in the rafters, prodding at the vines on the ceiling. <laughs> the ceiling was a lot lower in the computer lab, so I couldn't tell as easily, but that neck is long. Anyways, uh, hey Liz. Hey Inko, couldn't see you from up here till I heard you. Well, I guess I'll go ahead and get my food from the vending machines again. Making my way over to the vending machines, I do the same song and dance I did last time. A card swipe and a few button presses later earn me a, a couple cans of soda, two bags of chips, and a few candy bars. It's like when the teacher asks if you brought enough candy for everyone, only now it's true. I head back to our table, the bunch of food stuff in my makeshift pouch, and distribute them. Olivia gets her share, but she doesn't say anything. Ah, sweet! Uh, why thank you, Inko. Damien, if you'd be so kind. Already on it. Damien cracks open a can of soda, just as Lids lowers his head next to him. She's wearing a novelty soda cap. <laughs> he then speed swaps the old can with a new one, almost like he's swapping wheels on a Formula One racer. <laughs> thank you. No problemo. Liz's head cranes back up to the top of the ceiling to continue eating the foliage. <laughs> so, Nico, how's your day been so far? It's been pretty decent, I'd say. I'm mostly looking forward to photography since Ben will show me some good photo spots. Cool, cool. Damien just nods as he continues to munch on the sandwich. I think he's zoned out about halfway through my sentence. Oh, that reminds me. Did you enter in the contest yet? I did. In fact, Liz helped me out on helped me out and I submitted in my photos. Awesome, I can always rely on Liz to help you out. Flattery will get you nowhere, Damien. Just saying the honest truth. Liz entered the contest too, right? Everyone must be trying to win the cash prize. The money's okay. Liz comes down again with a mouth full of leaves. Her hand holds up a tray with each segment filled with different sauces. But the real prize is having your submission featured on the sponsor's magazine cover and a featured article. How is she still articulate? Do you have any idea how great that looks on a resume? Heck, I could probably get a scholarship with that alone. Whoa, you really got this all planned out. Where'd you submit? She takes a moment to swallow her salad. What the heck? Yeah, what the heck? <laughs> she takes a moment to swallow her salad and then shares a huge grin. I submitted my best digital art piece. This is the first thing I see when joining the stream. You're really late, Rob. Oh, what is it? Here. The tray is set aside so she can bring out her phone to show Damien and me her entry. It looks to be a village townhouse piece. Very rustic and classy. It looks pretty good. Yo, that's so cool. Yeah, I know I was developing and doing work. That looks so realistic. Thanks, took me about a week to really blend some of the more fanciful elements into each other. I based it off my grandfather's home from the old country. This is amazing. You can't even tell this the whole thing's digital art at all. Damien grabs hold of Lizard's phone and turns towards Olivia. Hey, Olivia. She jumps up, having been suddenly made relevant to the conversation she was just spectating. What? I'm not giving these chips back. They're mine. Uh, I was just going to show you Liz's entry. Olivia narrows her eyes and leans over to see the image on Liz's phone. She then looks up and gives Damien a quick nod before returning to eating her chips. Damien's smile falters a little at her minimal response. Oh, he's back to his usual green as Liz takes back her phone. Wow, Liz, I didn't know you were into digital painting. That looks great. Do you plan on being an artist after graduating? I've been here. Yeah, I know you've been here, Juan. Is this a dating sim or something? This is a uh, visual novel. I don't think there's really, like, dating elements. You're just, like, reading a story and making decisions. <clears throat> Ah, uh, thanks. Well, no, I don't plan on being an artist per se. My plan is to be an antique dealer, specifically with art. 
squeak. Did Olivia just get a little closer? What's that mean? I mean, she buys the splattered canvases everyone else just uses for money laundering. Uh, no. It'll be real deal stuff. There's a real market out there for it. So I'm taking the AB business class and using the school's prestigious art program. Oh, all right. Usually when this type of art style, you should think of dating sim. I guess I play too many shooters. Yeah, I mean, I guess it'd be fair to see it as like that or to assume it was. But yeah, seeing as I'm getting close to 10 o'clock here, that's when quiet hours start and I'll probably have to end the stream because I don't want to be blathering out loud and get people mad at me. <laughs> That's why I actually picked this place out. There's a real elite selection of graduates from here. A list of successful alumni here is nothing to sneeze at. I bet Olivia is going to be on that list someday. All eyes are back on Olivia. Damien leans forward as though he, j as though he didn't just put the spotlight on her. Her eyes flick between each of us and her mouth starts to open. Even Liz and I are leaning closer now. Who's the mysterious guy on the right? That's uh, that's our character. That's who we play as. Even Liz and I are leaning closer in now. Only to be disappointed as she shoves her muzzle into the bag of chips completely, tilting the bag upwards and crunching noisily on the last remnants left inside it. Damien sighs and Liz just, Liz just turns her head back to him. Maybe. Who knows? Oh, you're the school treasurer too, right? Sure am. I'm doing everything to make sure I'm ready for the real deal. I do love painting, though. It's just not an ends to a means. Maybe that's why I want to get into trading, so I can get the right people the right art they need. That's very thoughtful, huh? I guess I should start thinking of my future more. What about you, Damien? Eh, I don't really have a big goal set. The only reason I'm going here is because it's close to school to our home. Damien, you know I keep telling you about planning ahead. I know, I know, but I like keeping my options open. So what are you doing in school? I just pick out any classes that seem interesting to me. Though I gotta say, home economics class is pretty fun. I get to make food in class and eat it too. From learning skills in class like that, you'd be a perfect husband. Yeah. Wait, what? What? <laughs> but to get back to my point, that art contest. If I win and get that interview, it's an insane advantage. I'll say. By the way, Olivia, did you submit something for the art contest? Oh. She looks away slightly deflated. No. Really? Oh crap, I might have a chance then. Hey Liz, that, sound, that sounds a certain way. Ah, uh, sorry, I didn't mean it like that. Olivia rolls her eyes and nearly goes back to munching on her chips. Mr. Eikoden said you were really into painting. I mean, Miss Prockling wasn't too impressed with the doodle yesterday, but... Oops. Her, her suspicious leer is now replaced by a murderous glare. Yep, lunch is the perfect time to eat my feet. I haven't actually seen any of her real work, only something she's done out of boredom. Olivia's eyes close as she inhales deeply, the air of neutrality returning to her once she reopens them. I just... She looks me up and down again, as though something will be different this time. Who's Inko? It's the guy we play as. That's him. So this this is Inko. This is Olivia. This is Damien. And this is uh, Liz? Yeah, it's Liz. And I almost got her confused with Mia. Can't. I was gonna call him Mannequin Manny. What's that mean? Besides, even if I could, they're going to be looking for the best artists here, so you got to show that to them with how good your art is. But I just don't want them to look at me and feel like they have to give me a, a reward out of pity. Oh, it's because she's handicapped. 
So it's like, oh, we gotta give the handicapped person an award. Damien's face is frozen mid-bite, his sandwich losing its meat integrity by the second his eyes flick between Olivia and I. I can practically hear the blaring alarms in his head as his brain catches fire trying to connect dots. I want to be judged for my art and not... Olivia struggles to formulate the next few words and lets out a weary sigh. It would just feel undeserved. It's easy to understand what she means. Has that ever happened before? Do people really do that? You weren't there for it. Some loser used to even tell me to take advantage of it. Why not? That was a bad move, uh-oh. Uh-oh. Dude, seriously? Why? So I can constantly get reminded of myself? So I can't separate myself from my work? So I can get complacent, being worse, so I can eventually rely on it? So the playing field can be even? That's a lot all at once. I'm not even sure I got all that, but I definitely touched a nerve I shouldn't have. No, sorry. Olivia brushes her hair down. Look, I don't want to get awards and parades I haven't earned. I'm seriously not that good. I really wouldn't win. She sighs and takes a, lo a long sip of cola. Can I see some of your work? She nearly spits out the soda and glares at me again before the innocence of the question settles in. No. Man, she really shouldn't put herself down like that. We're at school to learn and all. There's no reason to be so down on ourselves. I get it. A lot of the students here are crazy good at art. Some are probably better now than I ever will be. But then they're just starting. It's pretty scary to think about. I mean, like that landscape city near the principal's office. Like, if you, if you were paying attention, she was the one who drew it. <laughs> but Inko, Inko's a fucking dumbass. He's always been a dumbass. Landscape? Hold on, I took a shot of it. It's a bit tough getting my camera out with all the books I needed for class in the way. I lay out the contents of my backpack, taking out the treasured DSLR out last. After finding the shot in question in the menus, I turned the display towards everyone else so they could see the glamour shot. A freshman made that painting. Just from looking at it, I can see why it won first place. I drew that. Yeah. Oh. Her name's on it, isn't it? My brain finally makes the connection with the signature on the mural. Is there a reason why everyone but Inko is a dinosaur-looking creature? There's there's a lore behind it. This this was a a real game made from a fan game, so they're trying to like make an original game off of it, I guess, because the fan game is not original. Let me get my liquids. My brain finally makes the connection with the signature on the mural. That was you? Is that much of a shocker to you? Quite a bit, yeah. It looks amazing. For a moment, Olivia's face lightens up for my words of praise, but it quickly dissipates into a look of fatigue. I mean, it's whatever. I had, I had to have some dumb guide help me out, so it isn't like I was the one who did it all. So when you say you can't enter, is it because you already won once? Yeah, basically. She looks away from us, eating her chips in silence. I've heard all the expressions of being one's worst critic, but I would never expect Olivia to kick herself this hard. I'm mentally kicking myself thrice for ju for ju <laughs> thrice over just thinking that last part. I have a history presentation, and usually the teacher likes commentating on the other files in our USBs. When we plug them in, in order to pull up slideshows, I'm going to do something funny. I'm going to pull a random file that says hit list. <laughs> oh no, that doesn't sound like a good idea. <clears throat> What, something wrong, Liz? Did she bite her tongue or something? Why is she imitating one of those pitcher plants right now? Liz? What's with the look, Longneck? 
Just surprised to see you in better spirits is all. You're making it weird. Don't make it weird. That's been ages, Olivia. I think a randy like Inky here got you to open up like this in just two days. He gestures to me. What'd you do, man? The girl in question freezes. Damien's thoughtless comments are having thrust her into self-awareness. Oh, there she goes. She just leaves. Olivia, wait! She's gone. Well, she did give a warning. Yeah, I was just excited when she was making good progress. Wow. What, what's wow about? The rest of the lunch we spent trying to talk about Liz's art process. Damien looked like he wanted to try to bring Olivia back into the conversation. But no... Oh yeah, the, the spelling mistake. But no one had any idea where she had gone. Still, a part of me thinks she wants to talk. So why doesn't she? Sadly, a question for another time as Olivia is the first to gather her things and leave the table. At least Liz and Damien wave goodbye. Leaving me to clean up all the trash from the table. Including everything I've removed from my backpack. Darn it! Alright, I think I'm going to... Actually, what would be... I need a good resting place. Yeah. Okay, I'm going to save it here. And we'll pick it up tomorrow. How's about that? Because it's it's quiet hours now for me. Yeah, I, I was wanting to stream this one earlier, but I had things to do. How's the game, you think? Well, it's not it's not the whole game yet. I'm surprised I have to, like, save on the demo. I mean, for a demo, it's longer than uh, Goodbye Volcano High, that's for sure. <laughs> but yeah, I'm, I'm liking it so far. I'm seeing a lot of similarities between this and Snoop Game. Um, I can't wait to play the full game. I can't wait to finish the demo. So I'll probably be back on tomorrow to do this all. I can't wait to see the sequel to Manny the Mannequin. It's not a sequel. It's going to be the full game. I'm assuming it comes out pretty soon. I didn't play Snoot. I watched Snoot. I, I was a loser. I, I watched it. <laughs> Snoot was all right. Yeah, I, I know I probably should have played it, but I didn't want to stream that one because that one, that one did seem a little bit more spicy than this. This one seems a little more tamed back and probably more stream friendly. I'm hoping. I always do that. I don't know the. Snoot was pretty spicy in, in compared to this. Holy shit, spicy. Like, it, it, it threw the, uh, the other F word about. The one that uh, sounds like Fagoli. <laughs> I'm, I'm not gonna... Well, I know I say it when I'm mad, but... <laughs> not, I try my best not to say bad words. <laughs> But yeah, it's, it's pretty. Good. Yeah, it's pretty for Chani. Yeah, this one, this one's. I think they they uh, reeled it back a bit because when you think about it, Snoot's on Snoot's been hosted on its own website or whatever, and this is a Steam product, so I guess they have to clean it up for Steam. If I had to guess. I mean, I, I like the story. I mean, even if they had to, like, reel some things back, there's still a lot of quality in there in the storytelling. I'll definitely be on tomorrow if you wanted to watch it. Probably, uh, well, tomorrow's Wednesday. I don't know if Blaze is streaming tomorrow. I'm gonna have to, probably far too late. I'm gonna, I'm just gonna shoot the text at him anyway. I noticed Blaze dipped without saying anything. I wonder if he fell asleep. Uh, 
he must have he must have fell asleep. Anything you would change about it so far? Uh, nothing I can say yet. I mean, I think it's I I don't know if it's like a good comparison, but like Damien feels a lot like Reed in a way. I forget, are you sub to one? Yes. All right. Cool. Cool. Because I don't know if you were stream uh, subscribed a long time ago. I know I have notifications on that go off if you like sub. So I don't know if I saw you or not. I have a really bad memory. A lot of Discord messages. just did right now okay okay so i do i do not remember you so that's good to know but yeah i'll catch you all guys uh tomorrow wednesday where i'll be streaming the rest of this demo hopefully finishing it up and, and i don't know what else after that we'll probably have to wait for the full game so i hope you all have a good night <laughs>